Join us for our early bird special. Every day at 8 a.m. we will offer you an incredible saving on a fantastic product. This offer is for one day only and while stocks last. So join us early to not miss out on some incredible savings. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. This is my first day back at work officially. I've been working, I promise, but today is my first day back at Zone Quarter. Hope you had a brilliant seasonal period. I can't say the word anymore, it's too late. Um, but it's nice to see you all. Uh, today we've got a really fantastic show, but we're going to start off with a uh, early bed special for you. So today we have got a bundle of two wonderful bag straps. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen these before, you might be new to the channel. If you haven't, they are absolutely super. They are prim bag straps and they're made from cotton and each of them are three metres long and you have one in black and one in the tan. So shall we see what the special offer is for today? Oh, oh, here it comes. So you are saving four pounds by buying two of those. So today's price is seven pounds 98 for the two of them, three meters long each. That's a good price, isn't it? They are so, so useful and that's just such a brilliant price. And it's great to have in stock so that if you've got the bag making urge, you can get yourself going as soon as you can. One in the black and one in the beige. I'm not surprised, Paul's telling me, Paul's producing today, he's told me that people are already sticking these in their baskets and I'm not surprised. £7.98 for the two of them, saving £4. Super, aren't they? You've got six metres in total, each one is three metres. Lots of different uses, I've got a couple of different bags to show you today um, where we've used them in the past. You've got absolutely tons. You've got enough to do something like a crossbody bag or a rucksack or a hold all, or you can do s two smaller bags with, your with just the shoulder straps if you prefer. So that's the one in the beige. Quite useful, quite a good neutral color that you can stick with all sorts of different prints. And then you've got the black, the classic black. And I've got a nice bag to show, bag to show you with the black strap on. Shall we have a look at them? Let's have a look. We've got, I've got, we managed to find three bags that were uh, in the stash out in the studio, one of which I made. So we've got here, um, they've, this bag, um, I think this was featured quite recently. I think it was just before Christmas I saw this one on air. Um, and this strap has been used for this front connector here and it's been sewn in. It's really easy to sew through. You'd, you might be worried that they're difficult to sew through, but actually they sew like an absolute dream. And the other nice thing is, is if you're using standard um, sewing thread, if you go a little bit wonky, you don't see it because the threads sort of disappear into the weave of, um, of the straps themselves. So that's quite handy. So this one here has gone up the front of the bag and it's gone through the D-rings. And then on the back of the bag, it's been used for the hanging loop or the grab loop. And we've got two two shoulder straps so you can get all of that out of just the one packet so you've got absolutely loads to do something like a rucksack looks good doesn't it just takes your bag making up to the next level by having the right sort of tools and accessories now I'm not surprised lots of people are multi buying these today because they're just so useful now I've got these other two other bags but they're in a different color of strap but it's just to show you different applications of the same same product so this bag I made ages ago this is a Debbie Von Grabler Crozier bag and on this one we've used it for the smaller handles across the top um, and in her pattern what she's actually got is a a narrower strip of fabric that she's put on the top of that so you can further accessorize the the straps so they look really smart don't they and then she's done the same thing in the design of this one for the long crossbody. Oh, look, I did a bit of a wonky sewing there. Let's move that out of the way. Look, here's a straighter bit. <coughs> Must have been Russian. <laughs> Awful. And then we have this version here. Again, this is, the, this is a pink version. But I thought it would be useful just to show you this because you've got, um, you've got the, the strap that's been attached to the outside of the bag here. So you can see there what I mean about the stitches disappearing into the weave. And then at the top, the handles are actually been folded in half and the edges have been sewn together. So that's really versatile and you can use it in lots of different ways on lots of different style of bag. 
So you get three metres, so again, that's plenty to do a bag like this. So we have, um, just to remind you, the early bird special offer. Code is PIXC63 if you are phoning the call centre, but I'm sure they'll know what you mean if you say I'd like the early bird special with the prim bag straps. Uh, you get two of those in there. One is in the black and one is in the beige. Each of those are three metres long. So you've got a four pound saving, which is amazing. Uh, they are made 100% um, cotton. So you can wash those. So if you've made a bag um, that you want to wash, um, they can go in the wash. So if you can see a little bit closer up, see what that texture's like. A couple of serving suggestions for you on the packaging. And then should we have a look at the beige as well? There's your beige. So two bag handles, saving four pounds, only 7.98 today. Really useful, these. Like I say, it's the kind of thing that I like to have available so that if I'm flicking through patterns or I've seen a bag that I fancy making, you can just get going pretty much straight away. And as I say, these are, these are you can stick through the wash and you can iron them, um, which is handy. If you're constructing and you want to give something a bit of a sharper edge, um, you can iron those as well. So remember, only one PMP for the day. So if you add these into your basket today and you see something later on, then don't worry, you're only paying one PMP, which is really handy. So that was the early bird. If you've already got it in your basket, you should be okay, but do remember to check out because it's not yours until you've actually checked out. Um, so don't miss out on those because they have been super popular for today. So shall we have a look and see what we've got on today? A nice, exciting day for today. So starting off is me. I, uh, oh, look, M is for me and miss it, miss out. So I've got a good stack of fabrics for you for um, all sorts of different bits and pieces. Some dressmaking, some quilting. Um, and then at nine o'clock, N is for new quilting designer. Oh, Louisa Galt is with us today. Very exciting. I'm so, plad she, so glad she's here today. Uh, at 10 o'clock, I've got a bunch of notions to show you, uh, all sorts of useful bits and pieces to use in the sewing room. 11 o'clock, we've got O for On Point Table Runner. Again, Louise is coming back to show us something that she's designed exclusively for us. And then 12 o'clock is a, a second O, so it's an OO kind of day rather than an O. And I am going to take you through the 664 Overlocker, the 664 Pro, and just talk to you a little bit about the Overlocker. So we have a nice day today. Uh, so that's what we've got. So if you are looking to get in touch today, that would be really lovely to hear from you. Have a look at your makes, or if you've got any questions for Louisa, you can go to the website. And if you have a look on the watch page, and on the, if you scroll down and on the right-hand side, there will be a message to the studio, and you can type in your message there. I think it's 140 characters is your maximum that you can type. So just uh, do a short message there, but if you want to do something a little bit longer, email the studio at studio at sewingquarter.com and we can have a look at any pictures or anything else that you want to send across we'd love to hear from you so if you are new today welcome along or if you've not bought before don't forget we've got a special offer for people that haven't purchased with us before you don't need a code or to remember anything or jump up and down on one leg um, the call center or uh, the people processing your orders will just pop it in your basket for you super offer here it is free gift and it's worth £29.98 and it's for every new customer in that you get uh, some meterage of fabric and you get a really sweet sewing kit beautiful all sorts of bits and pieces in there that's for every new customer so that's £29.98 and if you are new I'll just let you know again uh, you was, you've only got one PMP for the day so once you've added something into your basket, if you see something later on and you want to add that in, you're not paying extra PMP over and over and above that. So that's useful to know. So this first hour, miss it or miss out. We are super limited on this wonderful stack of fabrics. They're the kind of fabrics that once they are gone, they are gone. We are not ordering any more. So what we've got is what we've got. Look at that selection wonderful different options we've got there it's the lowest amount that we've ever seen so there are only small quantities of bits and pieces so you'll need to be super quick i'm going to whiz through them and we'll come back to any that are left um, or if we've got any special requests at the end so let me know if you want to see anything else so starting off with this um, there's only four and a half meters of this one so be super super quick this is a blue sea fabric love the colors in that 
very, it reminds me of those Japanese prints that you get with ships and, oh, they're gorgeous. There's a special name for them and I can't remember what they are. So that one's 5 99 That'll be beautiful for um, all sorts of quilting because you've got so many different textures within that. Kanadawa. Kanagawa, apparently, Paul's telling me. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Chinese whispers, I bet it's not pronounced that way. The way he's told me and I've then told you. But you know what I mean. Beautiful. That's probably going to be sold out if everybody that wants those is checked out because everyone's got a meter in their basket. So if you would like that, check out. Okay, so moving on, um, we have, this is, this is my yeah, favourite one in the stack, I would say. Beautiful. There is only five metres of this left, so be super quick. And because it's a dressmaking fabric, someone is likely to snap up a fair amount and multi-buy in these. Remember, when you're buying online, um, each unit is a half metre, so if you need a full metre, stick two units in. This one here, it's a beautiful, beautiful, 100% merino wool, and it is so smooth and so soft, it's absolutely gorgeous. 15.99. Paul saying it's just like him, smooth, suave, sophisticated. <sighs> He's available by the half metre. 15.99, it's just beautiful. It's woven in England, which is lovely, isn't it? Really nice that there's still some British textile industry. So we've got nice herring, a very subtle herringbone effect on here, on the wave, on the weave. And you've got a sort of a light grey that goes through. It's gorgeous. I can imagine someone making a waistcoat or um, the Baker Boy cap. That would be really nice in that as well. Or a pair of trousers. Oh, nice pair of trousers. Lined woolen trousers. These would be nice. You could make yourself a full suit. I wonder if five metres you could probably get yourself a suit out of that. Just about. Paul thinks he could get four suits out of that. He's got slightly shorter legs. Not as short as mine, though. <laughs> so that's Al Alfred Brown, not colour. Alfred Brown. Navy herringbone check fabric. That one, we're going to end. Be careful with that one. Right, moving on, we have got... Oh, Liberty. This one's in green. This is lovely. We've got a touch more on this one, 11 metres, but if you are making yourself a quilt, then uh, you'll need a fair amount. This will be beautiful for fussy cutting. You've got beautiful pheasants sitting in trees, chatting to one another. You've got male and female pheasants on there. Selection of different trees with different coloured blooms on there. 7 99 This is Liberty Pheasant Forest Fabric in green. This is from the relatively recent Orchard Garden range. That was only launched last year, 7 99 Paul, how many did we have of this one? It's gone in my head and out my head. 11 metres on that one. Super for fussy cutting, that one. And I like the green. It's, it's sort of a muted green. Nice and rich. Nice to have the... OK, we're moving on. We'll come back to that if we've got some of that left. This one, we have five metres of this one. Graphics are coming in for you with your price. $7.99. This is a fruit silhouette fabric. This is in the blue, which is almost like a, a china blue. Again, half a metre, $7.99. I think this would be really nice as a, um, a little Roman blind. I think that would look really nice. Or when I was a child, um, I had um, matching wallpaper and lampshade and curtains. And it reminds me of that a little bit. Mine was peach, but it had a, a little print like this on it. You can have full-blown matching this. You could easily make a Roman blind in a day. Seven ninety-nine for a half metre. That's your Liberty Fruit Silhouette Fabric in blue. all sorts of little bits of fruit on there you can see some strawberries something that looks like cherries 
Okay, next one. Let's move on. If you see something you like, make sure you check it out because it will go. Right, let me turn this the right way so you can see. This one is four meters. I've not seen this one before. This one's pretty clever. I like this. So apparently Paul brought something like this when he did his takeover hour, his unannounced takeover hour. Uh, this is pink pop art fabric. This is from the little superhero range. I love these. Proper pop art feel to it. You've got white background, your little black polka dots, and all your superhero phrases. Super, pow, bam, splat. This would be nice. You know what? I think one of my daughters would love this as a PE bag to stick a PE kit in, like a little drawstring bag. She'd love it as that, or as a cushion that she'd probably throw at her sister's head, saying pow at the same time. <laughs> Right, we have sold out of this blue wave, so I'm just going to stick that on one side. So that one's gone. Oh, this one's nice. I used this in something. What did I use this in? Crikey, my memory's terrible. This one's really, oh, I really like it. It's really nice. Uh, it's uh, got a sort of a lighter green background with a dark green. Little splodges, but they remind me of little trees. Apparently it's been used on a crocodile. And if my memory was better, I'd tell you what I used it for, but it's just gone out of my head. Robert, Robert Kaufman, green holly fabric, Caroline Friedlander, 849 for a half metre. And this is a half metre. Should we have a look at what that half metre actually looks like? So here we go. This is what a half metre will look like. So this is standard quilting weight. It's a nice one, that one. I'll remember at the end of the day when I go home, I'll go, oh, that's what I used it for. Probably not three in the morning though, Paul. I'll be uh, asleep then. 8.49. Okay, dokes, let's move on to the next one. This next one's gonna be popular. I can tell that already. It's a bit of William Morris and it's sort of got that herringbone kind of feel to it. There's only four meters of this, so are you ready? Oh, it's so smooth, so beautiful. Look at that. Charcoal Brunswick weave. It's not actually a woven fabric. It is a standard quilting weight cotton, but the print is a Brunswick weave from the Montague range, 749. The effect is really, really lovely. And the nice thing is, is it's not regular, if you like. It's got a sort of an irregular pattern to it. I think that always makes it a bit more interesting. Beautifully soft, very flat weave, 749. According to the instructions, this has got shades of burgundy in it, but personally, I can't see that, no matter how closely I'm staring at it and squinting. I'm just trying to look at on the selvage, because on the selvage, you see, you always get the little dots or shapes on the side, and there's no burgundy there. That's just black, black, bit less black, bit less black. Even number six is more of a grey and a taupe. Yeah, we're going to say no to the burgundy on that one. So we'll call that charcoal. Super duper. Next up, a bit more William Morris. Let's have a look, try and get this. This one surely has to be one of the most iconic William Morris designs. And we're so fortunate to have the quilting version of all of these. So you're not going to have loud, crazy wallpaper on all your walls. So this is the snake head fabric. Super, isn't it? With this beautiful red with a nice bit of uh, mustard. Anne in Cheshire's written in. Hi, Anne. How are you doing this morning? It's over here. Oh, hi, Victoria. What a super surprise to see you. I know I've snuck in. So glad you're on, uh, the, on the queue for quilting. Not yet. Looking forward to today's shows. Thank you. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you, thank you. Hope you've got three of you sorted out. Alison in Cheshire has also been on. Good morning, Victoria. How lovely to turn on and see you presenting. Loving the nails. Oh, I wasn't sure about the nails. Please wish Neil a happy birthday for me. Love, Ali. I didn't know it was his birthday. I would have come prepared. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the nails. They didn't go quite to, order, uh, to, to plan. I planned something else. It all went all horribly wrong. Oh, well. There you go. So here's your William and Morris 
snake head fabric, 749. There's only four meters. Lots of people are adding this to their basket. So make sure that you add that in. Okay, dokes, next one up. Some are already selling out, so be careful. This one and the one next to it are both very different prints, but they've got the same purple in them, actually. They match quite nicely. So this is a lilac blossom tree at 5.99. It's from the Kimono range. It's a Macau, so we know, well, if you've bought Macau before, you know what the quality's like. Only five meters of this one, 5.99 per half meter. Remember, if you want a meter, stick in two units when you're checking out or talking to the call center staff. If you would like to talk to the call center, 0800 112 4433. But these days, so much is online. Here are all the New Year sales figures. Just massive proportion of people all buying online. Can't be bothered with all that car parking. Terrible, isn't it? So that's Lilac Blossom Tree. Okay, next. Next up. Quite different, but it's got that same purple in it. I like the purple. I like the purple with the green. Well, it's not really a green. It's a gold, but it's got a green tinge to it. Kanji fabric, cream kanji fabric by Makawa, the kimono range. There's only four metres of this one, 5.99 per half metre. This is nice. And you've got, you've got some of them that are green and some of them next to them. Let's see what I can find here. So this one here is a green and this is a gold. You can see how that changes. The gold is fab. I love that. I wonder what it says. obviously says welcome to sewing quarter nice to have you with us i don't know what it says you never know it always makes me laugh these people that get tattoos and find that they've got something really terrible <laughs> written on their arm they didn't realize <laughs> like this is a terrible tattoo <laughs> oh, i'm too scared to get a tattoo i'm really not brave enough for anything like that crikey i like the idea of it but not the reality I'm a bit of a fainter, me. <laughs> I'm a liable to uh, keel over. Oh, I've not seen this one before. I like this one. Alison Glass. This is nice. These are almost like little teepees. But they're on... Is that... Well, no, those are clouds. Because I'm thinking that looks like water, but actually I think they're clouds. And they're little... They look almost like windmills, but I think it's just the design behind... You've got a little moon, little houses, clouds, but I love these. Could, those would be amazing on some hexes or six pointed stars. Oh, that would be really lovely. 5.99, Alison Glass, Overlook Kingsland from the road trip range. Only four meters of that, there's not an awful lot. It's nice to have the little moon added in. And some of these are also plain, aren't they? Quite nice to have the two different options. I like that. Should we have a quick look at that open out? This is a meter, bear in mind. So this is two units. It's nice, isn't it? And it looks different from afar. I think that's quite unusual. See, they do look like windmills. They're not, but they do look a bit like windmills. But they're not. <laughs> Alice and Glass, 5.99. Let's see if we fold that back up. And next up, we have this one is Tuesday Woods. What day are we today? Thursday. Oh well, Thursday Woods today. Tuesday Woods. Couple days late is fine. Tuesday Woods. Mm. That's also from the road trip range. So that would coordinate. So this has got the green in this one is quite similar to the green that's in the one that I just showed you. So they would coordinate nicely. Mm. It would look so sweet as a little girl's dress or just as an accent on a dress. That would be nice as well. Stick a little pocket on. Or some neck binding. That would be nice. 
Alison Glass, Tuesday Woods, not Thursday Woods, Tuesday Woods. Should have had it on a couple days ago. Oh, I don't know. Matches nicely. A bit of pink or a bit of gold. I like it. Okay, next. Shall we go Anna Maria Horner? That's always nice. This one, we have six metres of this one. I'm going to open this one out because it's got a larger print. So again, remember that this is a metre. So if you would like this quantity, add two units in. Let's go the other way around. There we go. Oh, I like, I like. Look amazing on the back of a quilt, wouldn't it? And nice, again, the nice thing about if you're doing smaller piecing, the nice thing about bigger prints is that you use the one fabric but get so many different effects. So it's almost like buying more than one fabric. Because you've got your nice lighter green or you've got your pink flowers, which are stunning. Very nice. If we've got time at the end, I'll come back and I'll get my fussy cutting templates out. I'll stick that on one side. Nice with the burgundy and the brighter pink. So it's Anna Maria Horner, patina imposter fabric. Passion flower range, 749 for a half metre. Remember, not much stock, so check it out if you've got it in your basket. Okay, next. Next up, we have something that is completely different. It is not quilting weight, it is a boiled wool, and it is 60% wool and it's mixed in with 40% viscose. Oh, this is lovely. I'm liking this. Paul, how wide's this one? Oh, it's similar. So this is 145 wide, and it's a boiled wool, so you can use either side of the fabric, either way. So great if you're doing something like a coat, you could do an unlined coat again. CL has a nice uh, coat again pattern, and Jules Fallon as well. So you could just bind those edges and make yourself a, uh, a nice little uh, throw over. Maybe not for this morning, that was a bit chilly. Although I didn't have any frost this morning. I was expecting a frost, but um, no, I didn't have one. So I was quite relieved. Apparently Paul had to de-ice his windscreen, but I was okay. I was out late last night with the girls, they had gymnastics and we were on our way back and I said to the girls, oh, it's gonna be frosty. But um, no, obviously warmed up, had some cloud come over or something. So this is 10.99 for your boiled wool, mixed between wool and viscose. Yeah, I really love it. I would really love, I've got a, yeah. This morning I managed to turn up and I had a yellow jumper on and I'd also packed a yellow scarf and a yellow hat. <laughs> I'd gone a bit much on the yellow, but um, yeah, I like yellow. It's nice. And it's got a nice drape to it, it's not too thick. You know, it's not a bulky boiled wool. So if you did want to stick in a bit of a pleat or something, because CL in her um, coat again, she's got this lovely detail at the back of the neck, but you can easily stick that in without it becoming too bulky. But that's two layers there, so um, it won't be quite as bulky as that. Okie dokes, next up. Oh, what have we got? Have we got several prints here from the same range? We've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to pull all of those across just so that you can see them. We'll go through each of them in turn, but I think it's probably worth just so that you can see what you've got because you might want to add all four of them into your basket or you might want to pair two of them up together. So these are a slightly different weight. I don't know if you can hear. If I come down near my microphone, you might be able to hear me go. A bit more of a weave, slightly heavier weight fabric on these. So we'll go here first of all. This one we've only got seven metres of. This is in the purple. The cotton drill fabric. This would be great for little summer shorts for children or adults. Although I'm not much of a shorts person myself. They'd be great for shorts or a sturdy bag or a tote bag. You could use your straps from the early bird. The beige would go quite nicely with this, these ones for a summer, summer feel bag. 
Okie dokes, so that was your purple. The next up is your blue. I think this one will be popular. Lots of lovely, lovely shades of blue in this one. Exactly the same print. But look how different it looks. And I am just double checking that it is the same print. No, it's not the same print. It's the same as the next one, but not the same as the first one. Because I'm looking at it, I'm going, no, no, it is actually different. Similar, similar, coordinating. Mixed daisies, cotton drill fabric. 7.99 for a half meter. I'm doubting myself as to whether it's the same print. <laughs> Paul's saying it's 100% the same print. He says, trust me, and you're just thinking, do I trust Paul? Well done. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. He's really wrong, is Paul. Trust Paul. Don't ever trust him if you see him in the pub. He'll sell you something. <gasps> Okie dokes. I've got some stories to tell you about a Christmas party. I've got loads of stories. It's great being the sober one at the party. You see and hear all sorts. So next up, this is the multicoloured, great, exactly the same print as the other ones, uh, but you've got beautiful pinks and yellows, muted greens, light blues, all on a sort of off-white creamy background. It's not a true white. Beautiful. I love this one. Okay, dokes. And then the last one from this range in the greens, limes and greens. Very fresh. Oh, I love it. Look how bright that is. That would look lovely on a cushion. For me, that's a cushion. Only five metres of this one, 7 99 So this is green mixed on the daisies. Cotton drill. 7 99 for a half metre. So just have a quick look at those all together, just so that you have got all of those. So you've got your green, your multi, your blue, and your, what's the first one called? Purple. Okie dokes. So next up, oh, this is really nice. This is from Santoro, I believe. Santoro. There's only six metres of this. Again, I'm going to open this out a little bit. This is nice. They are a design house, and you'll find their artwork on all sorts of bits and pieces. If you have a look in certain stationery stores, you'll see it on notebooks and pencil cases and all sorts. And these, I think, would be really lovely to just focus on a frame or two, cut them out and make a hero out of those. They're in frames, really pretty, whimsical. A grown-up version of fairies, because children grow out of things like that. It's really sad. But this is the grown-up version, without a doubt. You know, with the wings, cages and birds. Oh, super sweet. This is nice here. I like her headgear. She's nice, isn't she? And the dress with a cage. <laughs> a cage dress. And nice with all the little butterflies in the background. You've got the white and the beige and the pink butterflies, so you can fussy cut those out as well. Make the most of your fabric. Let's see, that would look good. Tote bag or a, a cushion in. My, my eldest daughter, I think she'd quite like that in a bedroom. She's got a little reading nook with a little chair on it. Make her comfy with a cushion. Only 7.49 for a half metre. Centauro Brown Girl Overlapping Patches Fabric from Lost Song Range. Very official sounding, isn't it? Okie dokes. Right, this one is going to be popular and it is super, super limited. And look, it kind of oh, doesn't quite match. It looks like it matches, but on the TV it doesn't quite go. Colours, the tone is a little different. This one, oh, I love it. Red Cranes Fabric from Macawa. Again, from their kimono range. We've had a couple from their kimono range this morning. And again, you've got those gold accents, the feet and the beaks. Wing along. Now, I've been abroad and we were in Spain and we passed these 
they were like telegraph electrical poles and we saw all these cranes nesting on the top of these poles it was incredible if everyone who's got these in the basket has got a meter then and they check out it's all gone so if you would like some do check out i don't like to push you but just make you aware that'll be the last time we will have this it's gone once it's gone 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 because Macau have moved on they've done the kimono range and they're off next one is a stripe i'm a oh, i love stripes this is the guess how much i love your range what a, there's such a lovely range of books very nice blue chalk stripe so this has got a white background and the stripes that you've got on there almost look like they've been drawn with a crayon so you've got blue green a lighter blue and a gray again an irregular stripe look great for a binding or incorporate it into a quilt back of a quilt nursery accents because they've got those slightly more sort of baby friendly colors and nice and neutral so if you don't know whether you're having a girl or a boy or you just have a girl that doesn't like pink it's quite nice to have yellow I love yellow and green see I'm back to yellow again super let's go for some chula we've got two here both on an underwater underwater theme from the zoomer range this one has got and I'm gonna again I'm gonna open this one out a little bit more so that you can see it's got some wonderful seahorses on that and some whales <laughs> I love them they're really beautiful and some shells Emily my youngest she loves collecting shells we'll go down onto a beach and she'll be there picking up shells and stones if you've ever watched in the night garden there's a character called Macapaca and it likes stones and Emily is just Macapaca We've got a big old-fashioned letterbox and you open it and the bottom of it is just full of stones she's collected and needs to keep. 749, Tula, Tula Pink, Sea Glass, Sea Stallion. And they are super, they are stallion-like, aren't they? Very proud seahorses, these beautiful shells. And you've got your seahorses and your miniature whales next door. <laughs> like I think the scale's the, the opposite way around. But you've also got little fish in here. And these nice uh, seaweedy flowers and kiddos. So that's the first one from Tula. And then this is the second one. <laughs> Look at those jellyfish. I saw a jellyfish the other day bobbing along. Aquamarine sea bloom fabric, 749. This is nice, isn't it? It's got a lot of movement in that with a with the tails. I'm not sure I've ever seen a jellyfish with such pretty tails though. I wonder if they're called tails. What are the bits that, the stingery bits that come off the bottom? When I was younger we used to have to be really careful of blue bottles in Australia on the beach. Be very careful. And then I once watched a program about these really terrible, um, uh, yeah, tentacles must be the word, is a certain type of jellyfish and the tentacles sting you but as soon as you try and get out of the water it turns to like acid or something it was terrible and I watched this program and then the next day I went swimming and I was petrified totally convinced attack of the jellyfish they are a bit scary that's one reason to live in this country isn't it get away from the scaries had a message from Lucy this morning morning Lucy oh it's on the screen Lucy from Dorset Morning, is it nice in Dorset today? It's a bit further south, might be lovely. Morning Victoria, lovely to have you back on. Happy New Year, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you too. Looking forward to today's shows. Thanks Lucy. Thank you very much. And next up, um, we've got two of a similar, same but different. These are your PU fabrics. This is a mustard. It's almost like they knew I was coming today. Soup super for bags that would look nice with the black candles that we had on our early bird special offer paul we've got stock of those left got some stock he's just checking for us on this one we've got seven meters six pound 25 this is wider i'll just open this out for you so you can see how wide this is a half meter piece 
This is 140 wide, but just so that you can see what that looks like. Super wide. But bear in mind, if you're making a big fat tote bag, unless you want it pieced, a metre would be more practical. Uh, so they've got a nice texture to it because some PUs are a bit flat, if you like, but this has got a grained texture to it. Perfect if you're going vegan for January, make yourself a vegan bag. January. Unfortunately, I like my uh, steak too much. Mm. So that one is in the mustard. And we also have in the maroon, or in Australia, you'd say maroon. Classy. Better maroon. So it is a nice, deep, rich, burgundy type colour. That would look lovely with the bag handle in the beige. 6.25. So it's made half from viscose and half from PU, and it's got a bit of stretch to it. So if you did fancy making, I think we made jackets out of this a while back. How much stock do we have of this one for? Nine metres. So there's plenty there if a couple of you want to make a jacket. Nice with the stretch because it just gives you that little bit of extra wriggle room. Lots of people are coming in for the maroon colour. More popular than the mustard. I guess if you're doing dressmaking, a nice skirt. <gasps> That would be nice. And I like, a, I like a bit of give in fabric when I'm making a skirt. And if you eat too much lunch or you want to sit down. So, oh, we've got a knit fabric. Oh, why have I not seen this before? That's so cute. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's a lightweight knit jersey fabric. Wild, wild west pandas. I'm not sure I've ever seen a panda in the wild west. But it's there. It's ready for action. It's nice and wide, this one. It's one, one metre sixty wide. Super wide. And as you can see, there, it's a non-directional print, which means that you can use it much more efficiently. So you can turn some of your pattern pieces upside down. Your little panda faces. He's cute trees and whatnot in the background you've got pink and gray 6.99 that one the next one is a panel and i love this one i'm going to open it out for you this would go would it go well with our pop art i'll i'll fish that one out and see look at them <laughs> oh a little superhero sleeps here dun, dun, dun. You could just cut out round these, give yourself a little border and make a series of cushions. You could patch them together, put them into a big quilt, stick on a tote bag. That would look nice. Applique them on. Shall I just pull out that pop art as well and just see without disrupting everything. Here's your pop art fabric. I'll stick that. I reckon you could coordinate that in. You could, you could cut out round the super and stick that next to one of your superheroes. Kapow, is there a kapow? There's a bam, splat, super. Super. So Paul, how many of those panels were there? Only nine panels, so be quick on that one. I'll get rid of this one as well. Okie dokes. Going to take my time and pause. It's a terrible pool joke. I'm really sorry. I should learn not to uh, not to say what he says. <sighs> He's unbearable. Black paws on a sand fabric. So this has got a two-tone background. And you've got your bear print. Stumping around. Again, this is non-directional. There's only four metres of this. £6.49 a half metre. Remember, if you want a full metre, add two units to your basket or ask the call centre for two. I'll give you two of those. Black paws on sand, 6.49. Here we go. Oh, not many left. Oh, this is lovely. This one. I'm going to 
Here we come. Graphics are on the way. It's only three metres, this one. Super quick, 749. Monica Fosberg for Anna Maria Horner. Cute little birds tweeting in the trees. You've got red and pink birds, multicoloured trees, blue, grey, orange and burgundy, or maroon. I'll stop doing my terrible Australian accent. My husband hates it. Muriel's wedding. Oh, it's just brilliant. Lots of people adding this to the basket because this might be the last time you see this because there's really not an awful lot left. Anna Maria Horner. Okie dokes. So this is a Japanese print and I love the Japanese prints. The fabrics are nice. They're a little bit stiffer, I would say. Uh, so they're really super for bag making as well as quilt making. 6 99 Japanese gold metallic. They're like baubles. They're not baubles, but they're like baubles. And they're all decorated. And they've got that wonderful gold overlay. It goes around all the outside of all of the baubles and decorations. And in the background, you've got little um, white flowers, but you've got white and pink. Just see if you can see. And if we can see in close. Oh, look there, you can just see the very faint flowers in the background. So it's not a plain background. So you've got your white and your pink and then your really, really light coloured. You can just see, maybe just see the gold glistening a little bit. Six ninety nine for your Japanese fabric. Next up, staying with the Japanese fabrics, we have got a hexi print. Perfect if you would like to make a hexi quilt, but you just don't have the time. Six ninety nine. Again, this has got your wonderful gold overlay that goes around all the hexes. Perfect lazy patchwork fabric. <laughs> I've been there, I've done that. Make yourself a bag, make yourself a quilt. Actually, one of the very first quilts I made was a, a patchwork print fabric. So quick, so satisfying. And all these beautiful designs. I like all of these, um, the little dragonflies, and these hexes are nice. There's a lot of detail on those. We've got some floral, some geometric. And another message has come in. Thank you. This is from Jan. Morning, Jan from Lancashire. Nice to have you with us. Morning, Victoria. Lovely to see you back. You are really tempting me with all these gorgeous fabrics, but she's holding strong. How long will you last is the question. But do remember, you and everybody else, if um, there's something that you like, you may not see again. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but thanks for your message. Very kind. Thank you. And oh, the cured. The bears. This is from a book. I don't know this book. Paul, what's the book? Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, that's super sweet. Oh, I love it. Have you seen the film Brother Bear? It's a really old Disney film. It's really nice. Very cute. Yeah, it's about a little bear who becomes an Indian in spirit or, some, or something like that. And it was, I've not watched it for years and years and years. It's a really, really sweet little film. And look at that. A parent bear with a little baby and a hug. And there's a family. Should we open it out a little bit? Just have a look at some of the other bears because there's, you don't want to miss out on seeing all the different ones. Let's have a look. <laughs> see what we can see. So what have we got? We've got two little bear cubs, one going for a ride, a little hug here with the moon, and two little cubs and some leaves, two adults and a baby and a little bird. Oh, they're gorgeous. And this is on a nice white background. You're all my favourites. Sam Mc... 
Sam McBratney and Eta Jerem. Anita Jerem, 2018. There you go. It's a book. Not one my children have discovered, despite numerous trips to the library. Only one, two, three. Oh no, a few more hiding underneath. Not many left. Oh, good grief. We've not got much time. Let's see. No, there really isn't much time. Let's whiz through these. Anna Maria Horner, Violet Learning. Those are fab. I love the contrast between the yellow and the purple. Very bold. And again, because it's that bigger print, it looks, there's so many different options and different ways that you can use this fabric. 749. This is from the English Summer Conservatory range, Anna Maria Horner. Super duper, 749 for half a metre. Next up, this one's going to be popular again. Oh, we should have had this at the top of the hour. Oh, well. Only nine metres of this one. How much, Paul, are you able to tell how much is left of the other colourway? Okay, we'll see what we can find out for you. So this is 749. This is a snakehead fabric in a forest colour. And there's six metres of the other one. I'll try and pull that out. I'm just going to pop that one down. Oh, oh, oh. So there's your two different colourways. So here's your forest. That's the one here. Sort of horses for courses. Depends what you're after, the effect that you're looking for. Okie dokes. Next one is a woven tapestry type of fabric. Um, this has got 80% cotton and 20% polyester. <coughs> Lots of little people holding hands. Okay, so 5 99 Link fabric. That's a good price, isn't it? Because this is super wide as well. Make really good Mrs. H bags, the carpet bag. That would be fab. Okie dokes. Lots of people coming in for that. Super for bag making. Oh, this is nice. This is a bit partridge in a pear tree kind of feel to it. But not Christmassy. It's not a Christmassy fabric by any means. It feels spring-like to me. Because you've got your little bird houses, little birds, apples, pears, and peach pears. Apples and pears. Five ninety-nine. Cream fruitful tree fabric by Macau. Crazy voices. Super duper. Not many left. Oh, some beautiful butterflies. Very very spring-like. You've got yourself some yellow, blue, pink and white, spotty. Well, they're not all spotty butterflies. They've got hearts and stripes. Really super for fussy cutting. Did you watch the fussy cutting shows yesterday? They were good, weren't they? Paul watched them because he was here. No choice. 5 99 pink butterflies from the Ellie range. 5 99 half metre. Okie dokes. This one is also got little butterflies and birds on. Very sweet and delicate. Your graphics are coming in here for you. That's 7 99 Very petite, delicate. Bluebird on green fabric. And it says green, but it's a, like a really, really pale mint, I would call that. That's from the Guess How Much I Love You range. So that should coordinate with that stripe we looked at earlier. Okay, next. Two more fabrics left. Oh, this is luxurious. I love this. This is Macau. Kimono lattice. I like that a lot. That's got that beautiful golden sheen to it. Endless pattern going on there. From the kimono range, green lattice, 5.99 for a half metre. Give the call centre a call. Say good morning. 0800 412 4433. Say hello. 
<laughs> they might be sitting there thinking, I've got no one to talk to. You never know. 5.99 for half metre. There's only seven metres of this one left. Okay, you know, so we have got last up, last, but certainly by no means least. You ready for this? It's only five metres. You are going to love this. It's absolutely, <laughs> it's really gorgeous. I love it. You ready? Oh, let me show you the right way up. Picture frame cats. Oh, you had me at Look at those kitty, kitty, kitties. I would love a cat. I miss having a cat. We have a dog, an old dog, and she would not, well, she would love a cat, but just to chase around the house. Because she's old, but she's still very, very able. Look at those kitties. You've got ginger striped kitties, black kitties, black and white, gray kitties. Some, are, some of them are friendly with mice. Mm. I think they're luring them into a false sense of security, if you ask me. Those would be great, fussy cut, or just added just in big patches on your patchwork project. Super, 7.49 for a half metre. Right, so that's our lot. Miss it, miss out. So remember, if you've got something you've got your eye on, check it out, because it's not yours until you've checked out. Get those in. So after the break, we have got a new guest in. Well, new, but not new. A familiar, a familiar person because we've seen all of her projects and I've done one in the past so it's really lovely to have her on the air on air with us so she'll come on she's just arrived on set looking totally at ease and ready to come on air it's so nerve-wracking that first time before you come on but it'll be absolutely fine it'll be fine so thank you very much and we will oh yeah we're gonna have a look it's gonna be this one here we're doing this one first so we will see that after the break go get yourself a quick cup of tea and then we'll see you back after the break see you soon from Sunday the 6th to Sunday the 13th of January, Sewing Quarter will embark on a journey over eight days with eight guest designers exploring our own A to Z of sewing. Over the eight days, we'll explore and demo applique, bag making and colour, cave facet and liberty, pre-cuts, quilting, sewing machines, thread and beyond. Each day, we'll also be joined by a different guest designer who'll share their expertise and professional tips. The lineup includes three brand new faces. Louisa Galt, Jenny Jackson and Helen Newton make their debuts. So join us live and give them all a big sewing quarter welcome. With eight days, eight designers and an A to Z of projects and products, you can brush up on your favourite techniques and even discover something new for 2019. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. We've got some exciting news. Sewing Quarter are delighted to announce that we now have our very own app. Available for download on all iOS and Android devices. Simply go to the App Store or Google Play and search Sewing Quarter. Once you've downloaded the app, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter live 24 hours a day and purchase all the products on today's show. So download the app today and keep watching Sewing Quarter on the move. Important announcement. Our new red button services are now live. This means that if you're watching on Freeview, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter 24 hours a day if you have an internet connected TV. At 1 p.m., you will automatically get a selection screen if your TV is connected and you can select Sewing Quarter to watch it for the rest of the day. Please consult your manual if you need help connecting your TV to the internet. Our channel number will stay the same, so we'll see you on air soon on Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Start the week on Monday the 14th of January with Sally Stevens and two elegant quilt designs. Sally begins at 9am with a stunning double wedding ring quilt. Cut and pieced using a clever Creative Grids ruler, you can sew the quilt at home with our choice of handy kits, including country cottage florals and rich woodland tones. Then at 11am, Sally is back with our exclusive Rosewood Quilt Kit, inspired by the sumptuous Moda Rosewood Fabric Collection by Three Sisters. So join us for a morning packed with classic quilts, professional advice and beautiful fabric. Monday the 14th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. A 
again is for new designer and we've got Louisa with us today which is we're just so pleased that she's here because she's been part of this channel in one way or another for quite some time so it's really lovely to have her here welcome welcome we'll say hello to her in a minute so today um, she's here to demonstrate um, something that you may have seen quite some time ago I've demonstrated it and I think Lucy Brennan demonstrated it as well it is the Sunspell quilt which is a beautiful English paper piecing based project and it's what Louisa is famous for if you like it's it's her super skill and here's one that she made earlier look at that it's so beautiful I love it absolutely love it so today for you we have got three different kits so that you can make one of your own so first of all uh, we have this one here which is greens so this is doodle blossom sunspell quilt kit you've got three meters of fabric We've got some fat quarters to go with that as well. So first of all, we've got our solids. We've got in the green, a cream and in the red. Oh. And you also get some thread for uh, Derek. It's 334 on his thread bingo and a nice minty green. And you also get your instructions. So 44.99. On top of that, you also get some fat quarters. Should we have a look at those as well? So you've got your solids that you can use for some of your piecing, so your English paper piecing and for your background. But here we've got a load of fat quarters that you can use. Let me show you the other way around. So you've got six fat quarters in here. This one's got hexes on it. You've got your red spot on. Lovely navy with houses on and trees. Tree houses, in fact. Some birds and a green spot on and a linear linen uh, not linen texture so that's 44.99 okay so that's your full kit there so your next one the one that you are demoing with it's this one here at the end hold on i've got myself confused hold on and thread that way around and we're doing right super okay we're with it we're on it we know what we're doing doesn't look like it but we know what we're doing <laughs> so this is your batiks sunspell quilt kit you get three meters of your solid fabrics you've got your turquoise aqua type color and navy and a fuchsia and again six fabrics you've got a batik So I'll just take you through how much you get of each of these. So you've got three metres of fabric in total. So this feels like, what have we got here? That feels like half a metre. That feels like a metre. Um, and then the one and a half. So you've got one and a half, a metre of the midnight, and half a metre of pomegranate. It's like a bright fuchsia colour. Okay. Get all your full instructions for all of those. And then your last option, again, you've got your three solid fabrics. You've got your metre and a half. This one is misty blue, which is like a sage type colour, I would say. A metre of your vanilla and half a metre of your crimson, which is like a burgundy type colour. And then you've got your six quarters here, six quarters, six fat quarters. You know what I mean. So you've got lots of different prints in there. Those are nice, aren't they? And your thread, Derek, 414. And there's your still. That's everything you've got in the Rosewood Sunspell Quilt Kit. So that's 44.99. And so we'll go over. Say Hello. hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> You're here. Oh, oh, you were here bright and early as well. Very early. Oh, matchstick eyes. <laughs> Welcome to the world of sewing quarter. Good grief, early mornings. <laughs> so you're here. Welcome. Um, yeah, thank you very you're much. You're happy to be here. I am, am of course. A bit I am, nervous? Yes. A little bit. A little bit nervous. <laughs> so for everyone who's not met you before, as I said, she's been part of the channel for some time. Yeah. You've been making, there or thereabouts, yeah. <laughs> making things in the background and designing things that we've been showing. But mm -hmm. uh, just tell us a quick bit about yourself and where have you come from? Well, <laughs> well, I've been quilting forever. 
sewing forever. Um, but um, we went around the world trip a few years ago mm. when we got made redundant. It was a very long story. It's one of those crazy things yeah. you do. You think, oh, suddenly I'm rich. I have no job, but well, I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> We ran out of money quite quickly, <laughs> but it was in a caravan in Australia when it was raining and I trekked myself to a couple sewing magazines, oh, quilt right. magazines, and okay. that's rekindled my love and I was very sad sitting in a caravan reading a quilt. Yeah, I know, but, but it was go. raining in the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then we came back and um, I got into quilting in a big way. Um, I got a job in a fabric shop that right. trained me very well Good. Um, but then got fed up with people coming in with all their projects and I couldn't do it because I was selling so I thought right well, I'm going to set up something on my own so okay. now I've set up Sew Motion Fab. for the last couple of years um, and I design my own patterns, kits, instructions, contribute mm -hmm. to mags, contribute to you. And that's how you've ended up here? <laughs> yes. So welcome. Exactly. Fab. So today we're doing the Sun, the sun Spell Quilt. Yes. Um, yeah, it's fab. And it's a, com a combination, well, I guess it's all English It's all papers. hand piecing, um, hand, I mean, it's as hand as you want it to be. You can machine the applique, you can quilt the machine quilt it, but the piecing's all by hand. Okay. So, and you can then hand applique, hand quilt. It's a lovely, slow sewing project, really. Although it does come together quite quickly. Uh, yeah, I guess because some of the pieces are a yeah, little bit larger, big, it yeah. comes together a bit sooner. Yeah. And the whole top isn't pieced. No. So it's not... Yeah, it's really on big. a background. So yeah. is this something that you would uh, recommend for a beginner? Or is this someone who's done some hand um, sewing and English yeah, paper piecing before? Yeah, if you're before? good with hand sewing. and Because the pieces are quite small, the middle bit's quite small. So... It is a bit fiddly, I suppose. Okay. I mean, it's not like quarter-inch hexagons, but. <laughs> okay, and they're cur and it's curved. And it's curved well. English paper piecing, yes. Okay, so that might be new to some people because yeah. some people may have just done only hexagons, done hexagons well. before. Yeah. So this is something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's have a look. Shall we have a quick look at the instructions yeah. first? So with your each of your kits, you get a copy of the Sunspell instructions. So uh, we'll have a look, quick look at those. So you've got lots of step-by-step -step instructions to show you how to do some of the curved basting, all your instructions, picture of the finished quilt and all your templates, which are all actual size, so no photocopier changing required. You'll need to, co well, you may need to copy those or we'll talk about making yeah. templates, but there's no enlarging or reducing. No, no, do, they're all 100%. Is, which yeah. is super. And a nice picture. So those are your instructions. Right, so okay. where shall we start? So should we start with the payer template, plastic template? Yes, so your templates are in... So all those are your templates. Um, you obviously need to photocopy that for your paper temp your paper pieces. And they're all full price. Um, what you do, because you need different numbers of different pieces, yep. what I would do is to make a card template and then to draw around that onto your paper right. rather than putting it through the photocopy of a thousand times. Yeah. So if you, what I tend to do is trace it onto paper, rough, just like printer paper, print paper yep. cut it out roughly, okay. then glue that onto a thin card right. and then cut it out accurately okay. so you've got your nice clean cut shape okay. and then you can use that to draw around onto your papers. Yeah, because I guess the paper gets all yeah. doofed yeah. about. So, because you need different numbers of different templates, then you can just carry on okay. like that. Um, I mean, I've used photocopy of paper for the templates before. I've started using a, th a th slightly thicker paper. It's about 160 G GSM. GSM. Okay, yesterday, I think, Paul, were we selling a 180 GSM paper? Oh, well, that would be perfect. Yeah, so if you have a look on the website, you should be able to find that, um, and that will do. Oh, exactly brilliant. That. Yeah, brilliant. Perfect timing. Okay. It's almost <laughs> like we planned it. <laughs> Um, right, okay, so then you need your template plastic. So we've got some template plastic, this one here. So because this is only because of the fussy cutting that you can do. So okay. obviously, shall I show you the one that I've made now rather than the one that, or the one okay, behind so us. Okay, so template plastic if you're after that. 2 you get two sheets of that and that's more than enough for what we're doing today. Oh yes, definitely. So as you can see in this fabric here, for the demo one, I've fussy cut so that you basically want to be able to see through the template when you put it on your fabric to okay. see where you're cutting okay. so let's have the so in the pack oh, you'll I get the fat print. quarter i like this one actually look at that Oh, yes. and it's a shame to not make the yeah make the most exactly of those you've got so flowers. many flowers the thing with the fat quarter is you've only just got enough to get your 10 
of this shape out. Right. Okay. So when I'm fussy cutting, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> This is a great tip, actually, if you're doing any sort of fussy cutting. Rather than cutting into the edges and cutting all around, if you just cut the edges out yep. and you've got little bits left over, so you're not ruining that bit, so you could save and leave, save that in for your stash else. box for something else. Yeah, OK. Um, so there, that piece, you can see where I fussy cut. And I tended to just get the papers and plan them out so that I knew that I could you get how much space you had. 10 out of each one. Okay. Which is fine. And you can get 10 out of You can it. get 10 out of that Super. one. Super. Okay. So that's, so yeah, so that's the fussy cutting. So with the template plastic, draw around the template, trace the template. And then if you then go around with a ruler, where's my ruler? Oh, I've lost the ruler. And I don't have a <laughs> spare have ruler. ruler knocking about. That's right, we will get you a ruler if you need one. Oh. We'll find one. I don't know where that went. Paul's on it. Roller <laughs> on the way. Sorry. Um, so if we put I've got a piece of paper, just a blank um, piece of paper. You can use the back of that. Okay. So you've used the template plastic, you've traced around the shape. Yep. And then you then basically need to just measure out a quarter inch all the way around. And I just do a dot with your ruler and then just join the dots up. And join the dots. So it just gives you a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around okay and if you prefer could you does it have to be a quarter of an inch it How can be a little bigger be? it can be a little bigger because we're not fussy cutting intricately that yep. everything's got to match up with everything yeah you're just going around a general motif motif um then yeah no smaller than a quarter but you could do a little you bigger, could go bigger. bigger. okay do. yeah okay so then when you've got your piece of fabric so i've drawn around this one already so you place your fabric your template down draw around the outside you're not going to see the drawn line anywhere so I just use a normal pencil okay, you don't need to use anything you don't need fancy. to use anything okay. fancy and then as I said when you're cutting your shapes out so rather than cutting in from there you're ruining all that yeah bit. I guess you'd then just yeah. cut the flower in half yeah you might be able exactly to use. and on such lovely fabric you don't want to so if you just snip okay so you've just pinched and snipped. I've just pinched the line I've just pinched the line and then just draw a uh, cut on the draw line. And you prefer to deal with scissors rather than a rotary cutter? Yeah, okay. I do, because of the curves, really. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable with, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably a bit slapdash with <laughs> rotary cutter. <laughs> I could do straight lines. Not very practised in doing curves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah next step, rotary skills. The next skills. step, yes. Get one of those 18 mil wheels. Yes, the little ones <laughs> yeah, the are tiny little easier ones. to get round the curves. Okay, so there you go. There's your paper, your first shape. So then, basting. So then you do the same with those. So okay. for instance, that's the purple one. And again, I think I laid all the papers out just to make sure I could get could get all of those out. That star shape out of the shape oh so all oh, right okay yeah. so again you've only just i mean you don't have to fussy cut you don't you could just do it just go for all it. over i guess it Especially depends on whether one. you've got your eye on it on the fabric for another yeah. project it, well yes exactly you could yeah. get probably half of the of half of that if you wanted to just squash them together but sometimes it is nice to have the yeah. effect of the similar part yeah. of the pattern throughout the design exactly so yeah. again i've left that one there so i'll come back to that one okay so for the basting I tend to just so so line glue pen. Okay. And do you Ooh, always mine's glue a bit based? Of a mess. <laughs> oh, good grief! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do always glue based. Okay. Um, I did use the thread based very long time ago. Okay. Um, before you saw the light. Before I saw the light. <laughs> I know people are. Some people are against the glue, and then I can understand why because glue and fabric don't. So sometimes go together. Generally, it's but needle and thread. Yes, exactly. Uh, just so sorry to interrupt. Just so that you know, we haven't got the Soline glue pen. We sold out of those yesterday, I think. So today we've got a Prim Aqua glue marker, seven uh, seven ninety nine, three ninety nine. Don't panic, not seven ninety nine, three ninety nine. <laughs> so it does exactly the same thing, but we've just run out of one, so we've got to stop yeah. with the other. And they're both water based, and they both wash out. So they wash out. Um, so that's why they don't really harm the fabric at all. Um, and then with, because you're basting curves, it's a lot easier to 
baste with glue okay. than it is if you were going to if you were going to baste with thread you'd either have to do tiny little stitches that you have to obviously take out yeah. or you do a running stitch but again it's not going to be as tight or secure so as glue the glue pen's the way so forward. I think glue pen's I'm, the way. I'm converted <laughs> <laughs> so I dab a bit of glue on the back of the template and place it on the wrong side of the fabric centered as as possible okay as much as possible and then I run I actually put glue on the paper okay not right up to the edge because you're going to sew the pieces together and you don't want the glue getting in the way of, of when you're sewing and right, when the okay. needle's going through so just slightly in from the edge just a thin line of glue. The glue goes on, this glue goes on blue. I think prim, does prim go on? I, you know what, I've not used the prim one before, no. so I'm not sure what colour that one goes on. But they all dry clear, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they all dry clear. So and then just press it. And when you're pressing the fabric onto the paper, press it quite tightly. Some people are a puller. Okay. Some people are a pusher. <laughs> I'm a pusher. <laughs> that sounds so wrong. Actually, I'm trying to think. Yes, I push. I'm pushing Yeah, well. so just push the fabric up to the... So you know that you've got a nice tight fold okay. and it's going to be nice and tight on the front. Lovely. Okay, and then just do the curve one bit at a time, really. So pushing that on and then... And then when you get to the curve, you'll see the fabric bunches up a little bit. Yep. That's fine. It's supposed to do that. Don't worry. As okay. long as you've got that nice, smooth curve there. Okay. And you're not just working from this edge round you've sort of come in an inch and yeah. you push that bit in yeah so I'll do that and work back yeah and work back and if you do get I mean, if you, I'll show you if you do get a fold I'm not going to be able to do it now <laughs> if you get a sharp <laughs> edge just peel it back it's all reposition all this glue just re and then reposition it like okay. that and do you um use best press or anything before you I start do. not before I start really I've never done that. Okay. Um, I do when I've pieced them all together. I'll be, I'll spray it with best press. Okay, so that's after you've. It. So that's after you've done all of your piecing. Yeah. So once you've done. Once you've, you've got added to this in, bit. Okay. I'll put this. So on that's the your blue. best press if you're after some of that today. This is the linen fresh spray, 170 mils for 4.99. So yeah, then I'll spray that these with that. Once you're done. Press with the iron, um, and then. It, it's also a good tip is if you've left your papers in with the glue for a while and the glue's quite hard, it can be a bit difficult to take the papers out. But if you give it a press, it moistens, it softens it up the up. glue. Mm. It warms it up, softens up the glue, and they're a lot easier to yes, take out. I like that tip. It's a good one. Okay, so there's okay, your Okay, so that's actually shape. not quite so scary as no. you might think. If you've only ever done a hexi, you'd be thinking, oh, good grief. <laughs> so we'll have a look at that. Should we have a look at the front and the back? That is, see, the effect of fussy cutting is worth it, it is isn't it, lovely, surely? Isn't it? Yeah. So we should have a look at the back as well, so you can just see. Okay. Super duper. Thank okay. you. Okay. So that's that shape. So shall we sew that shape before we base the yeah, others? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? So I've left a gap in this ring. So to be able to, so this one I've alternated. So this is your outer ring? This is the outer ring. So you get 10 of your flowers and 10 of the orange. Okay. Um, and with the fabrics, can you mix and match a little bit with what all, you've got in the kit? Yes, they're all fat quarters. Um, and this is the biggest shape. So yeah, this you can get out of, as long as you can get this one out, then you can get them all out okay. of anything you want to. So you could go with the, is there a pink? Yeah, you could go with the crosshatch pink that I've used, or not crosshatch, the spray time. Yeah, the spray time. So that would pick up the blue and uh, the pink in the yeah, flowers okay, as well. Nice. Although I'm not sure what you do with the purple. <laughs> Orange and purple. Hmm. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, so sewing the big pieces together is probably the easiest bit. You have to excuse the scribbles on my templates. I used old paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Well, that's the nice thing about using yeah. a slightly heavier weight, yeah. heavier weight is that you can reuse them. Exactly. Um, right, so... Just pretend that this is a separate piece, this orange piece, and we're going to sew these two pieces just along there. Okay. Okay. Now, different to traditional paper piecing, I'm not going to do a whip stitch. So with hexagons and diamonds, when you've got flat edges, or anything really, um, you do a, a whip stitch that will go 
up and over. Yep. Which means generally that the stitches are going through to the front yes, yeah, of you your just, piece. You often see yeah. those few stitches on the front. Whereas I now do something called a flat whip stitch or a flat back stitch. Yep. Um, so it's similar to a ladder stitch, but it's kind. It's still going up over. But because you're sewing through the seam allowances on the back, the stitches isn't stitches aren't going through to the front yeah okay. so it's quite nice and neat yes it is really neat to not see because some people like to see the fabric yeah they, the stitching and other people yeah I mean sometimes you might see, see the odd one and that's fine because it's handmade yeah, and it is you handmade. allowed <laughs> <laughs> okay so stitching oh I've forgotten my needle <laughs> oh now I might have a needle in here here we go Ah, look at that thank you grabbed one at the last minute <laughs> and i'll let you put your own thread in thank you. ready for action okay so are you using an aurafil thread i'm using an aurafil 50 weight thread um, and that's your preferred yeah. stitching thread yes so we've got some boxes of those for you today who knows where i put those oh no they're here so we've got the three different tula pink boxes beautiful boxes love a bit of packaging <laughs> so let's see this one here i think we decided that this set went most yeah. beautifully with the colors that you've got here so we'll have a look at the front of that first you get 10 50 weight threads inside let's have a look inside 34.99 oh look at those colors they're so nice aren't they <laughs> they go really nicely with this particular bundle yeah, so what I use, I tend to use grey with everything, but you could chop and change your thread to match the fabric. And particularly if you're doing something like a whip stitch, yeah. where you will see those yeah. stitches, if exactly. you're not comfortable yeah. doing a flat back stitch, then yeah. Yeah. for other projects, choose so a coordinating for, thread. Yeah. Okay, so okay. where was it? All right. So, um, threaded needle with a knot on the end. So okay. to do a knot on the end. Can we go in and see the knot making? So place your, are we there? Nearly there. there. Right, we're there. So I put the needle on top of the end of the thread and then you wrap the thread around the needle. Almost like you're doing a French knot. Yes. If you've done. Yeah. And then hold that quite tight and pull the needle all the way through. And then that will give you a knot at the end of the thread. Oh, I've never done it that way before. I like it. <laughs> It's Super. quite addictive, and obviously the more you go round, the bigger your knot the bigger will be. The knot. Yeah. Learn something new so every I do day. It every with day's embroidery. a school day. <laughs> I do it with embroidery and everything now. So I'm going to do it with everything now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Super. Okay, so we're going to sew these two together. So you've obviously got a point here. Um, on the instructions on the pattern, the template has got the lines across it, but not in the actual template. You don't really need it, to be honest. It's We're going to join them where they just join at the top. Okay. Okay, so you can see where the curve starts to meets. separate. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple, a stitch there first, a couple of basting stitches, just to join that point. Okay. And then I'm going to go and sew from that end up. Right. And okay. then I know that I'm going to where reach gonna that. Where are going to stop? Yeah. Okay, so if we insert the needle... I bring the needle up behind the seam allowance just to bury that knot, really. Okay. And you come out just before the edge? Just before the edge. Do a stitch or two just to secure the thread. Like so. Diane sent in a message for you. Diane from Chester. <laughs> You're laughing. Says, hi, say hi to Louisa for me. She's a lovely and talented lady who is <laughs> enthralled with EPP and all things quilty. Break a leg, Louisa, from Diane in Nesto. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, Diane. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring the thread across to where they meet. Oops. I'm used to doing this on my lap. This is what it is. <laughs> it is the whole sewing standing up is the, one of the most difficult things about this job. Okay, so you've baited those two there. Okay. Okay, and a couple of stitches. And then I tend to take the needle, take the thread through the loop just to knot it. Okay. 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 So... To be honest, this is the way that I do it. I would then cut the thread and sew up from this way. But alternatively, you could use a wonder clip 
which I do have, and put that on the end. Okay. There. The clips I use at home aren't as tight as these, so I tend to, they tend to fall off and not rearrange, but I've been using this one this morning and it's mm, quite nice. They're really good, aren't they're they? They're quite tight. So in this case, I would then sew, so I'll show you how to do it this way. So you're not going to go through to the front. You're okay. just going to pick up the seam allowance across both sides. Okay. And not just one or two threads because you're going to just fray it. A good chunk, well, right. not, not okay. a chunk, but <laughs> you a know what few. I mean, a good few, so you can see there. Um, and then go all the way down. They don't need to be as tight as a whip stitch. Right, okay. Um, so you can see, you can see with a whip stitches. stitch, I do tend to pull yeah. them relatively tight. Oh, I meant close, sorry. So yeah, pull them tight, but they don't need to be as close and as many as you would do a tiny whip okay. stitch. So go across all the way down. So then if I show you the front, yay! <laughs> you can't see the stitches. Yeah, okay. You can see a couple of basting stitches, but yeah, so you can't see yeah, the stitches Yeah, it's a really nice there. effect. Yeah. Because I'm not sure, it's not as common, is it, to do the flat no, stitch? No, no. Um, but I mean, I do this stitch now with diamonds and uh, hexagons, um, not even, not just curves, it's stitches. So if, there's another tip, if for instance you were out of line here and this bit was a bit longer than this bit, what you would do is if you, the one that's a bit longer, yep. if you insert the needle a bit further up okay. and then pull it and then insert it okay, back so to where you were. So you're back easing it back in. And it might look a bit gathered on the front, but once you've ironed it and taken the papers out, it disappears. And it gives you it's best fine. press and yes, exactly. encouraged it. And my needle's just come out. Yeah. So you'd sew all the way down there. And then you keep going, alternating okay. your crescents until you've got a full circle. Okie dokes. So Super. that's your outer ring. That's nice. I like it. It's lovely, isn't it? Looks very nice. Okay. So then for the... Okay. So there it is in situ. So, should we just hold oh. it up? Do you want to see it on the blue? Yeah, oh, we'll stick it on I've the blue. I've done it on the... One... This is the background. So, the kit comes with a metre of the blue. Oops. Oh, look. I have done the... Sneakily. <laughs> Here's one she's prepared earlier. There we go. Oops. That looks amazing on the navy. The blue's lovely, isn't it? Looks really good. Quite striking. Have I gone the wrong way on that? No, that's fine. That looks <laughs> absolutely super. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop back, yep. pop back next door. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just run through for everyone what the kits are that we've got available. So we'll do that and then we'll move on to having a look middle. at your other shapes and yep. the middle ring. Okay, <laughs> so here's a finished version that Louisa made earlier. So should we go through that one first? Uh, so that one's at £50. Uh, it comes with your instructions that we looked at earlier. Uh, sorry, this one's £44.99. Uh, so this one, you've got, the graphics are on their way in, you've got a metre and a half, you've got three different solids, you've got your metre and a half, this is apple, and it is a really fresh bright apple. You've got a metre of your, is this vanilla? ivory and half a metre of your scarlet red. On top of that you've got your thread 334, nice bright green and you've got six fat quarters. Lots of different varied prints in there. You've got a spot on and a linear or two spot ons, a linear. So that's 44.99. So the one that we're demoing with today this is the most popular one. I'm not surprised having just seen what that looks like on the navy. It looks absolutely super. So you've got your metre of the navy. You've got half a metre of your uh, pomegranate and a metre and a half of the peacock. Oh, I saw a peacock the other week. It was beautiful. Lots of people coming in for this one. Very popular. You've got thread colour 482 to match your peacock and these wonderful set of um, fat quarters beautiful that just looks just absolutely pops when you see it on the navy background 
some spray time, some linear and some batiks and another spot on. Two batiks and a spot on. So that's £50, a summary for you. And then our final bundle, a little bit more reserved and smart. You got this one? The graphics are coming in for this one. They're on their way. They're coming, tootling along the road, like me walking the dog. So we've got, again, you've got six metres of fabric. You've got uh, the, um, the one that looks, says misty blue, but is more of a sagey green, which is a metre and a half. You've got a metre of the vanilla and half a metre of your crimson. 44.99 and here are your fat quarters very nice and of course you've got a thread on that one as well and your linear. very nice 44.99 so we have just so that you can see those we've got some wonder wonder clips and some glue so the Wonder Clips come in a packet of 10. She uses those and she likes these. She can recommend their springiness. <laughs> Pack of 10 of those, 7 99 Clover Wonder Clips. Nice, bright. You're not going to lose those on your project. Okay, 7 99 for those. And the glue pen that we're using uh, today, because we've run out of the sew line one, is your Prim glue pen. So we'll come in with the graphics for that one. It's exactly the same as the Soline glue pen, three, $3.99. This one is very, very bright yellow. That'll match your uh, Wonder Clips. Dries absolutely clear and washes out. It's a low tack glue, but it does stay in place for quite a good period of time. $3.99. ISPH28. $3.99. Easy to pop in your basket, one of those. I'm always running out of glue. Okay. Loads of people adding, loads of people adding that in, but it's a good price, so I'm not surprised. Okay, so should we have another quick look at the finished quilt, and then we'll go back over to Louisa. Right. Okay. So we've done the large outer ring. Mm -hmm. That's the same shape repeated yes. several yeah. times. Make yourself a ring, um, and then the inner one has got your two different shapes. Okay. Um, now, Lucy in the past has called this a half-eaten apple core. Right. <laughs> it's not a full apple core. It's a, the bottom end's more red than the top end. Right, OK. <laughs> Apparently. So, again, I fussy cut these so that I could just get the top point of the flower in each one. Yeah, that's nice to be able to get that in. If you want to see the... So that's what it looks like when it's whole. OK. So, I mean, you, it's up to you what you put in that top edge. Uh, the top bit so I've put in that circle motif you could put in the cross and have the Ooh, circle yeah, at the that bottom that might be quite nice as well yeah so it depends on which way but as I say if you put your papers on out first before yep. you draw anything or cut anything then you know that you can get them out Vaguely of that piece gonna fit yeah and that's not I, I think that's always the nice thing about quilting is that you can Two people can have the same kit and yeah. create something completely totally, different. Totally, totally. I mean, if you mixed and matched, the, as you said, the fabrics around, it would be totally different. Yeah. Well, so I'll just cut out this last shape. Okay, so you've done the same thing. You've taken your template, you've placed that down, traced that round in yeah. pencil, in pencil or whatever. Yeah. And then cut it out neatly. Okay. So then again, so this one's a bit different for basting. So we're going to... Dab a bit of glue on the back of the paper. Okay. Give it pressed down. And then, because I've secured the paper already, I can now cut the fabric. So you, because this is a concave edge, yep. you need to snip the fabric to help it fold down. Okay. Okay. So you're not going to go right up to the edge. It's about one or two threads worth away from the paper's right. edge. Okay. Just so when you fold it over, you're not going to get a fray. Right, okay. Okay. So And again, this is something that might feel quite nerve wracking yes. if you've only ever done hexes before. Yes, exactly. But it's so absolutely how many snips fine. have you done? So there? I've six. done about six or seven. Okay. About a half an inch apart. And you'll always do these inner concave ones first? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's your so then you take your glue pen again and then again I go on the paper, but just in from the edge. 
and then you're just going to push and fold over those snipped edges and as you can see there's a tiny bit of fabric there that hasn't been cut and right, that means okay. you're not going to get a fray on the front and what would you do if you did get a fray would you just start again i probably would um okay. although to be honest if it's a wall hanging that's not going to be moved around a lot or washed or anything yeah. it'll be fine okay. and you're going to be the, your stitches are going to be too, quite close together on the back so it's not going to come apart yeah, okay. um, but if it's a quilt that's going to be washed and manhandled washed. then yeah <laughs> okay so you get a nice smooth curve okay. that edge and then I turn it round and repeat the other side and if you could because you haven't cut in if you can feel a tightness there don't worry about that it just that's just easing it in easy. when you glue it I've got a thimble <laughs> You forget you've got them on yeah, the front, you? Okay, and then the bottom edge again, just as with the other curves before, just fold that up and make sure you put a bit of glue on that flap there. Okay. So the fabric sticks to the fabric. So you're gonna go all the way around there. Super simple, isn't it? It is. I mean this is that you can do I love this watching in... it, you just get drawn in to watch it. The great thing about this project is that you can do bits at a time. So you can sit at the table and baste a few of these and then and you tend you to can... do basting at a table but sewing well, on the lap yeah actually i've got a bit of old skirting board <laughs> <laughs> that i put on my lap paul are we selling old bits of skirting board <laughs> <laughs> see if you can get some of those i'm sure you can find one in the garage oh, no, <laughs> and i use that as a, a thing to lean on right, but you okay. can use a book or anything it doesn't okay. have to be skirting <laughs> So there you go. So there's okay, your nice. Okay, so let's have a quick, another quick look at that one as well. It's really neat and tidy, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite tight. And you can feel, because you've pushed the, the fabric against the paper, you can feel it's quite tight on the taut on the front. Yeah, and it's nice and sharp. Yeah. Super. No need to press? Nope. Super. That's what we like. Okay. So now, if you're not fussy cutting, things get a lot easier and a lot quicker. So. I tend to just use my paper template as a guide and I will dab a bit of glue on the paper, stick it down willy-nilly. <laughs> Throw caution into the wind. Caution into the wind. And then I would roughly cut a quarter inch seam allowance okay. all the way around. So I mean, this is great for hexagon, everything that if you're not fussy cutting. And then just make it a nice even shape. Like so. Okay. And then again, run the glue on the paper. And press it down. So again, that the fabric will buck, ruffle up a bit, okay. which is fine. That's You're what right it's with supposed that. to do, yeah. Good. And then again, make sure you put some glue on that bit of fabric and probably in there as well okay. just to stick that down so you just get a nice sharp point all the way around so now you've got a nice sharp very nice again nice and sharp what we call that an eye an eye <laughs> shall we have a look at that one we'll look at those together That one's just slots in there. Oh. Let's see that on the back. Okay. okay. Right, so now you're going to sew those together. So now we sew these together. More curves. So this one, I would definitely tack or baste at both ends. Right, okay. Okay, um, I mean, you can try and use the binding clip again, but because it is quite a tight curve, it will tend to come loose. It'll shift anyway. And it'll shift okay. your fabric. So. As you can see on here, so this is the finished ring. Two of these make up a circle. Okay. So you want this to be as round as possible. Right, okay. Which it should be. So you need those points to so match. you need those points to match. Just to let you know, we've got about 15 minutes of demo oh. time left. Okay, so if I just show you how, so if we just... We've also got a message from Christina. <laughs> do you know Christina as well? I think so. Might do. Christine, North Yorkshire. 
Oh, yes. Maybe. Maybe. Hi, great to see you in action, Louisa. Learned lots from you at the sewing group in Colby. Oh, yeah. Is it Colby? How do you pronounce <laughs> yeah, that? Col Colby. 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 It's not how you spell it. Colby. <laughs> <laughs> I love English town. Colby Newham. Colby Newham. Another lovely town in the north. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Lovely oh, lovely. Oh, how people. nice that people are watching. Yeah, it's nice. I'm I've... trying to get brownie points for the next workshop they turn up to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously not a native of the North East, but it does feel like I am. It feels days. like home. It does, yeah. <laughs> um, so what I would do is, actually, because you've got two points here, if I show you, I tend to sometimes leave the thread. So I'd tack that. Yep. I'd unthread that piece, thread another piece, and then tack that and then sew down. Okay. And then break that thread. And then I've got this thread here to then join my oh, next purple you piece. Can go on. Right. So does that make sense yes. for that one? Shall yeah. I show the little one? Yeah, shall we move we on and out? have a look at the little one so if as well? So if I show you on here, actually. So this is how, so I've tacked both ends and then you just do a stitches all the way along there. Okay. So if, and then when you're sewing, if you, because obviously this is, gets a bit bulky, if you always, if you're right-handed, if you put the one that you're sewing on in your left hand, then you've only got that bit to hang on yes, to. Yes, okay, you've not got... Okay, you can do it in sections and then join them all in together. Okay. And I see you've taken out some I've of the papers. I've taken some of the papers out. When do you normally take the papers out? When I've sprayed it. And I just did that now because I was going to show you, if we had time, how to sew it onto the background fabric. Right, okay. But we probably won't have time for We'll that. squeeze it in. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so the last ring is the little ring. Um, so this is made up of the clamshell clamshells and a little petal so again because you've got such a tight curve there i would baste both edges both points and then sew along Back there the what i do tend to do with this one as well the smaller rings i would have one piece of thread i would connect that and then i would do a basting a, a running stitch in the seam allowance to the next point attach the next green one and then so you've attached the whole circle Right, okay. With one thread. Right. You okay. can attach them all at the same time and then go back and sew them in, or you can just do one at a oh, time. Okay. But if you've just got that piece of thread there that's always there. Then you're not you forever connect. breaking off yeah. and rethreading. So you're rethreading these bits, obviously, and you're going to have to go down and sew them each, but it kind of. It manages, you it can secure quicker. them without yeah. having to redo it all yeah. over and over. So that's okay. that one. That's okay. That. And then when I've basted it, I've just done a couple, like the similar with the purple one, I've just cut in couple of times to a couple of threads yeah from the from the edge and then just basted it okay and like that okay so is that all right for that one and then yes. we'll show you so if i should we out... actually should we lay this out yeah. and then we can put the put oh, on put the work in progress one. yeah as far as we've got Oops. so if you to get your center so if you fold your meter piece in half and one way and then in half the other way increase the center points okay and you're going to get this has been in my suitcase so it's right <laughs> so you've got your crease so the center circle is quite easy to line up because you have got even points okay so if you line up those easy points with your creases and place that in the middle um, when I'm placed it down I tend to use pins okay um, you can Put a few bits of bondo web on the back right, and okay. press that in just to place it or you could use your sew line glue pen um, pin it and then you could put a few bits of glue around the edges and take Belt your pins away if you're not yeah i mean if you're worried about getting pricked by the pins and you're sitting on your sofa or losing yeah, okay. pins and they do they've do. got a habit of yeah. wheedling their way yes. out but i tend to because i would probably do this on a flat top because it can get a bit bunchy if you're doing it in your lap Okay. So I would do it on a flat top. Uh, We've got a question from Janice, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Janice, Janice from Greater London. Um, when you finish fussy cutting the fabric, do you keep the complete leftover piece or chop it down? So when you've got... When the holy bit. The holy bit. <laughs> I would leave it as a whole piece just because in future you might not know what you're going to do with it. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, that bit is probably a bit too stingy. I probably wouldn't keep this. Oh, but you never but if know, you, had you a could half get hexes meter, out of those. Yes, you could get, I mean, like, you've got crosses there. So if you were going to do smaller pieces, you could get a few crosses or dots in. So I would leave it as is. Yeah, I'd leave it as is. I think I'd be case. tempted to as well. Yeah. And are you generally a fabric keeper? I am. Yeah, it's not good, is it? <laughs> not good. Order, yes. My husband loves it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got about 10 minutes left. So you okay. Know. So, 
I did leave that one there to sew that one in. Let me just... Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, it's just gone a little bit. Yeah, so that will go there. And then and that will go there. There you go. So that would be the full circle. So wow. if you just centre it, so may, just make sure that, again, these are all even, so you can line up your points there and there and then make sure that the points the spaces between these points are even yeah and then that will just get you even okay and then there's your and final and then that's the final how long are your arms <laughs> and again because you've got where's my other oh, did I sew? oh, yeah, I did. oh that's all right there you go oh yeah and again just make sure that your spaces between that the looks so points good are even isn't that bright I love it on the navy so then what I would do, oh, I didn't bring it with me, for the quilting, oh, yeah, so pin it, and then what you're going to do is you're going to do a slip stitch. So you would, it's before you stick it on here is when you best press it. Best press it, then take the papers out. Yep. So I've taken some of the papers out of this one already. Um, and when you're taking the papers out, all you do is you just gently peel back the, I've got my thimble on again. <laughs> gently Peel back the papers, and because I mean the stitches are quite tight together, so you can't, you don't have to be that gentle with it. And then you might find that you hear the odd, the paper ripping a bit. It's fine. It's only been because you've sewn through the paper, so you just give it a gentle tug. So don't worry about the noise. <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> and there you go. Oh, I love taking the papers out, it's always satisfying. <laughs> okay, so when you come to, so I'm going to pin this as if it was in place, and then <sighs> we're going really good. to slip stitch it in place. So, oh, come on, right, the best on air needle threading I've seen. <laughs> I did it in the dark the other day. I did it by feel. Like, oh, did oh, you? God. Wow. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> right, so I start, if you just hold back the panel and go to where you're not going to be seeing the back fabric. Okay. Secure you. And you're attaching all of these on before you've made any form of quilt sandwich. Yes. Yeah. So then, so you secure your thread in the background. You're going to pull, bring the thread up just to the very edge of the fabric. So you've gone through the background fabric uh -huh. and then you've come out on the edge yeah. of the patterned fabric yeah. and you're just going to pull that through and then you're going to go down vertically okay back into the background fabric you're going to travel along the back of the background fabric yeah and then bring your needle up again okay okay so you're going to go all the way along i do the inner edges first and then the outer edges okay so when and also when you're pinning try and push out the fabric when you're pinning because so you don't have any gathering behind. Right, okay. Okay, so you're going to keep going all the way along, like so. And then you're going to have your, so then when you're done, you're going to have your fully pieced Okay, and you start cave. middle. Uh, yeah, middle. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's also middle. Centre, middle. Centre, that's a better word. Outside. And then your outer <laughs> ring. It looks really, I just really love it. So Striking. navy makes all the colours really pop. And then what would really be lovely if you used then to hand quilt it. So I, I love big stitch hand quilting. I don't do any of that silly little stuff. <laughs> and it gives you a decorative addition a to the quilt. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I would have done do this in white embroidery thread wow. and that would just pop. Yeah, it really would. Yeah, It'd be lovely. looks fabulous. And what have you done on this one? Can we so this look one see? I've used the red. I actually got a bit confused with this. Um, I use the green as the background fabric instead of the cream or the okay. white I think you get in the pack but it's it's about a 40 inch square so you can use either you could to use be honest it's up to you um, and then I used a red embroidery thread that went okay. with that can we see in at that embroidery thread because that looks really nice so we have some of that and we've got some red and some white embroidery thread for you to have a look at but that re looks really nice doesn't it and you're using a standard sewing needle for that? Standard sewing needle, um, well, embroidery sewing needle, um, and I use three strands of the thread. Using three, so, yeah. three strands. Okay, so we've got the white. So wouldn't that look, that would pick up all the, the white. The white would look really nice yeah. on the navy, wouldn't it? 
So it's anchor thread, 99 pence. And have you got any idea how much you used? Um, that one, to be honest, it depends how much quilting you want to do. That one used more or less a whole skein. Right, OK. Um, the one that's on the pattern, I actually quilted inside every shape and around... Echoed. Echoed around. And I think I did five or six echo lines, so that would probably take two or three. So it really depends on how much, yeah. how much you're depends after. Depends how you want to go. Only a couple of pence. To come in, <laughs> add them in. So there's your pattern. Shall we have another quick look at your pattern? Okay. And is there anything else you would like me to talk to us about? Oh, you get the binding in there as well. Oh, okay. Um, in the pack. So that's the half metre um, for the binding. And that's just put on like a normal quilt binding. Okay. So all um, your step by step instructions, photographs of how to do your curved piecing. Did you take all these pictures? Yes. <laughs> I've actually got that on my wall now. I don't oh, put do you? much up. I haven't got room, but that one's actually on my room in my okay. work room. So those are your instructions. Those come in all of the kits. So let's see. I'm going to take these with me in a minute. Right, was there anything else that you needed to cover off? Have we done everything? I think that's, that's it. I think you've done yeah, it? I think you've so. made it through? <laughs> Are you coming back in an hour? I think so, yeah. Good, good, because <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure I could demo what you were doing. Not prepped at all. But thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Enjoyed having you here. Yes, thank you. You made it through. <laughs> right, see you in a bit. Okay. Thank you. All right, see if I've got everything with me. I'm just randomly grabbing things and taking it with me now. Right. What have we got? So, should we talk at the most popular, talk at, talk about, the f most popular kit first? The one that we've been demonstrating today? I say we, I've had nothing to do with it. The royal we. Uh, so, um, this is the most popular kit for today. 50 pounds with the batiks. You've got your peacock, your navy and your pomegranate, your aqua thread, total of uh, three meters of fabric and you've got your six fat quarters. So you've got two batiks in there. You've got the purple and white, which she was using on the middle ring, if you like. And you've got a spot on your other batik. Lots of new buyers coming in today. Don't forget you get a special offer. Don't need to do anything. They'll just pop it in your, pop it in your order for you. And your linear, which is actually a little bit more orange than it looks on screen. That looks quite red and your spray time and these wonderful large flowers that she's fussy cut and used on that outside ring they're super so that's the whole kit for you 50 pounds so this is what we've done today well made a start on she's done an amazing amount of work hasn't she looks really super so next up what should we look at next let's do this one here This is also super, super popular. Doodle Blossom. Again, three metres of fabric. You've got your one and a half of the apple. You've got one metre in the ivory and half a metre in the scarlet. And look at these fat quarters. They are amazing. You've got your hexes. Spot on. Tree houses. Oh, I love that one. What else have we got? Your birds tweeting away. A spot on and a linear. That's forty four ninety nine. Complete with your thread add instructions. And the final option that we have for you today. Last version. It's quite different, this one, much more muted, sensible option, let's call it. Rosewood Sunspell quilt kit. You get three metres of fabric as well and your six fat quarters, instructions and thread. You get one and a half, a metre and a half metre. And look how nice these are. Very super smart. I love the grey and the red together.
do check out. Lots of people adding it into their baskets this morning. Not surprised. So you might also need other things that we've looked at today in the shows. Um, we have the glue pen today. We have got the prim glue pen. This one is in the neon yellow. It's quite neon. Shall we have a look at that? It's $3.99. Lots of people are multi buying that. Well, if you've only got one set of PMP, then why not add it to your basket? You might want to remember that one PMP for our next hour. We also have the template plastic, useful for fussy cutting, and when you are repeating cutting shapes out over and over, really useful. So you get two sheets in here, they're approximately A4 in size. They're opaque, but you can still see through them. $2.99. And we've got the Orofil threads. This is the kit that we thought, or well, the selection that we thought would go quite nicely with this set. Look, and you get a nice pretty picture on the front. $34.99. These are all 50 weight. These are the small spools. Okay, and then quickly we'll have a look at the other two. Which one would you like? This one first, Paul. $34.99. Let's have a look in those and those. Okay, and the last one. And inside. Oh, they're lovely. And these are nice. The 50 weight is great for piecing. So if you're not using a flat back stitch and you're using a whip stitch, then it's quite nice to match your threads to your fabrics. So after the break, haberdashery. It's not, we're not up to H, are we? Hey, we're up to N for notions, not H for haberdashery. Got that all wrong. So come and join me. Lots of bits and pieces that you might want to add to your basket. Really helpful stuff. Have you been watching Sewing Quarter, but still thinking about placing that first order? Then the new year is the perfect time to start shopping with our brand new offer for brand new customers worth $29.98. Not only will we send you two meters of fabric worth $14.99, but also the official Sewing Quarter sewing kit, also worth $14.99. The kit contains everything you need for sewing on the go and those last minute fixes. Simply make that first exciting purchase with no minimum spend and we'll add these gifts to your order automatically while stocks last. So start shopping and let us wish you Happy New Year with these Sewing Quarter Essentials. Join us for our early bird special. Every day at 8am we will offer you an incredible saving on a fantastic product. This offer is for one day only and while stocks last. So join us early to not miss out on some incredible savings. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. What happens when you cross a wedding ring with a pickle dish? Find out with expert quilter Emma Bradford on Tuesday the 15th of January. A combination of these two classic patterns results in the thoroughly modern quilt design in a pickle featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Curved seams and sharp points appear to float across the quilt top thanks to the contemporary use of negative space. Our kit is bursting with bold colours to bring the pattern to life. Emma will be demoing the foundation paper piecing technique used to create those impressively accurate clean lines. To make this quilt yourself and not find yourself in a pickle, Tune in for Emma's top tips and wise words. Tuesday the 15th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Tune in on Wednesday the 16th of January when Victoria Peat and Fiona Hesford are on hand with ways to stay warm indoors and out. Victoria is live at 10am with a simply joyous pickle dish quilt designed by Jo Avery. She'll be using vibrant cashmere garden fabric collection and fun foundation paper piecing technique to make this modern classic quilt. Then at 11am, Fiona is here to show us how to sew a trio of luxurious faux fur accessories, a chic hat, stylish scarf and charming vintage star bag. As always, Fiona has top tips, this time on working with faux fur for sewing skills. 
So for cold weather projects that make winter worth it, join Victoria and Fiona from 10 a.m. on Wednesday the 16th of January, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Welcome back. Wasn't Louisa great? It was so nice to see. I was just being into the green room and she's there. She's relaxing, just going, oh, it's over. Getting that first show out of the way is always such a massive relief and she's done a brilliant job. Thanks for all your messages for her. It's really nice when you're on air and you're new to know that people are watching and messaging in. It's really lovely. So, oh, I've just turned your light box on. So this hour, I've got a plethora of bits and pieces, lots of notions. Let's not call them haberdashery. We do know our alphabet, I promise. So lots of notions for you today. Um, to start off with, I'm going to show you um, our wonderful light box. Oh, the thing that you didn't know you needed until you've seen it. I bought one recently and I absolutely love it. I use it all the time, really enjoy it. So today um, we've got some of these on offer for you. 79.99, we're quite limited on what we've got available. Um, we've got a few in stock. Uh, this one is really super, it's nice and lightweight. It's not too heavy, it's not too bulky. You can see it's not too thick, nice and thin. You've got, oh, it's only six millimeters, Paul's telling me. It's not very thick at all. So it's A3 in size. Oh, I'm gonna turn that off. I'll keep turning it back on. As you can see, it turns on and off <laughs> nicely. It's not difficult to use. It's only got one control. You've got one button here, which is your power button. So if you press that, See, now it's not going to turn on. So it's got four different brightness settings. So it will go up and down. So keep pressing. So you've got A3 in size and you've got um, measurements along the side. So you've got your metric measurements along two sides and then you've got your um, imperial along the other. So you've got up to 16 inches on this side and up to 11 inches on this side. Uh, you've got, it comes with a power cable. USB power cable, uh, micro USB, I think that is, that just plugs into the side, and a standard power plug on the other side. Uh, and you've got, on the bottom, you've got some non-slip feet somewhere. They co oh, they come separately. You just pop those on yourself. They haven't been put on here. Um, and this is a nice acrylic, which means it's not too heavy, and there's no risk of shattering. If you did happen to have a, a bit of a mishap, you won't have broken glass everywhere. So the control is just that one button on the side that you press to get as light as you need it to be um, according to your, your needs or how dark your room is. And the nice thing about this one is that the light distribution is really good. What you quite often get with um, light boxes is you'll get the lights going along one edge and by the time you've got to the other edge, this isn't as bright. So the brightness is even across the whole of the device makes tracing super easy. There's nothing worse than spending that kind of money and then being disappointed with it. But this gives a really good distribution of light. So, um, the w the, well, this has actually been designed for us. This is our own product. And we went to industry experts and made sure that we did the right thing and we got the right contents, if you like, and the right light bulbs and the right distribution of light just to make sure that we're creating something that's really good quality. So um, what I find is really nice to do is when you've got it on, let me just get that on the brighter setting, is I find it really useful for doing things like fussy cutting and I use it for foundation paper piecing and I use it for tracing applique. But you can see how easy it is to start placing and seeing where your designs are. You can see it or not quite so well on the TV, but you can see coming through your paper templates how your paper how your fussy cutting. And I'll quite often use it when I'm doing foundation paper piecing when I'm trying to figure out where my next piece of fabric is going to go. So you can see fabric placement underneath. So you can see through where you're going to go. They're really useful and it's not the sort of thing that you use just for sewing either. You can use it for paper crafts, um, all sorts of different applications that you've got for that. I use it all the time and I try not to let the children use it because they go, Mum, can I use your light box? I make them use their terrible, not terrible, they're not quite so efficient 
one that they have. Child-friendly, we'll call it. It's plastic and orange. So, should we have a quick look at the box for you so that you can have a look? Do you want to look at the box? Let's have a look at the box. Here's the box for you. So, it's got all your information on there. Eco-friendly, bright LED, means that it's not going to get hot, which is good. And it's got your brightness if you're into uh, your techie information here. 4,200 looks. wonder how many light bulbs that's equivalent to. USB powered, like I say, it comes with the USB cable, micro USB, um, with a plug as well. So, I mean, how often do you buy things online and then you realise they don't have a plug with them? Or they have a cable but don't have the actual plug. So you've got the A3 work area, and that is the actual work area. The device itself is a little bit bigger. It's slim and lightweight, and you've got those four light settings. And it's because it's slim, it means it's easy to pack away. Personally, I'd probably keep the box, put it in the box, and then you can slide the box down the side of a cabinet or under a sofa. Just so it keeps it looked after. So there's your light box, 79.99, A3 in size. Loads of people have bought these and they've messaged in to say that they're using them an awful lot and they're really useful. So that's off and then one, two, three, four light settings and then off again. And your power connection is just a little, a little USB on the side. So that's easy, that comes out. And then you've got a cable here. I'll show you just how long your cable is. That's your cable. So easy. And that's it, simple as that. Super simple. So that's your light box. Okie dokes. Right. Let's have a look at, shall we have a look at, we'll do some rotary cutting in bits and pieces. So shall we have a look at the rotary cutter and the mat? So I'll just put the light box there. Anyone shout if you want to have a look at that again or you need any specs on the box or anything like that, just let me know. So we have here, beautiful cutting mat. Love this because it is orange, 16.99. Prim Omni Grid orange cutting mat, 11 by 17 inches. So on this side, you've got all your imperial measurements, and on the other side, you've got your metric, 30, and 30 by 45. Shall we have a look at the other side? And you've got your diagonal lines on there as well. All printed in white, self-healing cutting mat, and you've got this nice hole here for hanging up. Okay. Always useful. I've got a, a wide range of cutting mats at home. I've got from the very large down to the very small, but I've also got some in this size as well. And it just sort of depends on what kind of projects you're working on or whether you're going to a class or something like that. So let's have a look at the rotary cutter. Um, I bought one of these actually when I was in Australia a few years ago. Slightly different colour, but um, it was just like this one and I really love it. Let me see if I can get this out of the box. So I'll just put that back on. This one is a slightly different style of, um, of blade. Uh, normally you've got like a device or something that sort of exposes the blade. This one, however, is done via pressure. So it comes with this guard on the top, plastic guard that just slides on and off, nice and easy. And this one is pressure sensitive. So when you press down, the blade is exposed and opens out. But you've got on the back, you've got two different settings, if you like. You've got, well, variable settings from either soft at one end and hard at the other. You can't quite pick that up. But you can just alter that. That depends on how much of the blade is exposed when you are cutting through your fabric. Okay. So if I should show you that again. Well, and the nice thing is, is because of the way it's designed, you can either use it one or the other. So you've got left or right-handed, depending on how you're doing it. And it's really nice because um, whilst 
rotary cutters are good with a safety thing you don't always remember to do it and if you don't use the same cutter all the time you don't always remember to use that safety device whereas this as soon as you let go or you release the pressure the blade is protected which is really handy and so i'll just show you so i'll try and do this so that we can see Let's see if we can see how that blade comes out. And you can just see, as I press down, you can see how the blade just comes down and engages. Okay. And you see the blade comes out again. And then if you're on hard, so that's if you're going through thicker fabrics or something like that, you would just change onto your hard setting. Okay, and then as I release the pressure, the blade pops back up into place. You can see, it's good, isn't it? We like it. So it's immediately safe. But then if you want to put it away, um, you have just got your cover that you can pop on. Okay, so 12 99 it's a good price, 45 millimetre. Kai rotary cutter. It's your standard most popular size. Nice handy hook if you want to hold it, hang it up. Nice that you can do it left or right handed. So there's your packaging, got some instructions on the back. They've only been in stock for about a month, I think, so they're quite new. I've not used one on air, but I think we should use them more often. I didn't know we had them. So um, we've also got spare blades for these as well. I'll get Paul to show you those. I just want to have one. The, and the nice thing, and I'll show you actually when we do the blade, I'll show you how easy it is to replace the blades on these. So again, I'll go on to the soft setting. So I've just moved this dial on the back over to soft and then when you come round and when you press down you don't it's not don't have to do anything fancy or anything you just push down and you can just see as I'm pushing down the blades just engaging down and then I'm just putting not, nothing excessive no more pressure than you would do normally and then just when you get to the end and you lift your blade again that pops back up so then if you're doing your heavy fabric, so if you're doing something like the boiled wool, if you picked up some of the boiled wool in our eight o'clock hour, you can move across and do the hard. That will get, get you through those thicker fabrics. Okay, so have a quick look at the replacement blades whilst we're here. Always, always, always need spare blades. I am always running out and being annoyed that I've not got them in. So these are just 4 99 Replacement blades, made from steel. You get one of those in the packet. Not much else we can say about that, but be really careful. I'm always, I have a separate pot that I put all my sharps in. I use, tend to use my old blades on a broken handle for cutting out paper patterns and, you know, when you buy patterns that you've got to put together. Um, I'll just use an old blade for that, but otherwise just be really careful. So to replace the blade, um, you, all you do is you undo this back, oh, which I've done up too tightly. I've done it far too tight. You just undo and it just drops off. So then you can pick that up and swap those over and then you can pop back on. So that's nice and simple. Okay. So there's your blade and your replacement. Pop a replacement in if you're buying one of these so that you're set to go whenever you need to. Okay, we've had a question from Mary on the light box. She would like to see... We can't quite turn off all the lights, but this is what it looks like when it's off. So if I just have a... If we can have a... We maybe have a quick zoom in to have a look at that as close as we can. We've got four different settings on that. So that's when it's off. And then we cycle through level one, two, three, and four. And then off. But unfortunately, we've got so many bright lights <laughs> in the studio. It's so much brighter than at home. I needed a box, stick it in a box. Mm, actually, could we do that? Could we make it a bit darker by popping it half in the box? See, they're all thinking upstairs that I'm going completely crazy. A little bit crazy. See, they're laughing at me now. Could we make it darker in here? 
<laughs> what am I doing? Right, let's see. Let's see, is it still plugged in? No, I've not. I've managed to unplug it at the same time. Oh man, it was just such a good idea. I was doing so well. Hold on, we're on it. Let's see if I can get it in. I can't quite get it in the box. Let's see. So that's off, nice and dark. Okay, so that gives you a bit of a, a slightly better idea. There you go. Everyone thinks I'm crazy now, but that's the best we can do with all the big studio lights. <laughs> So if you're looking to order one of those, you might want to give the call centre a call, 0800 112 4433. Oh, it doesn't cost anything. Right, let's have a look. Um, keeping with the, the nice orange mat, um, we have a really lovely roller. It's called a Roll and Press from Clover. It's very nice. I like it a lot. Graphics are coming in for this one. Made by Clover, so you know it's a really good quality product. It's $15.99, a roll and press. So this is really super for things like foundation paper piecing or pressing seams open. Um, so uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that you don't think you need until you've given one a try and they're super useful. So inside, uh, it's got a nice ergonomic design of handle. So it's nice and easy to hold a nice finger finger placement and it's got a roller on the end but if you have a look at the roller the roller is ever so slightly tapered so it's not totally flat it's slightly sharper like comes up if you like in the middle and that makes it really easy for going around curves so what you can do is i'll use something like this for foundation paper piecing so if you are working in a tight space and you don't have access to an iron or you're going to something like a retreat or a workshop or something and you're thinking, oh, there's only one or two irons, there's not enough to go around. And I don't know about you, but if I'm at a class or a retreat or something, I always feel really guilty that I'm the one that's constantly at the iron and taking up the space. So something like this is really useful. You can take yourself a small hard surface and you can do all your seam pressing there. So you can just fold it back and your press so it gives you a nice super sharp edge without needing to use the iron so you can use it for all sorts of things so um, something like this I would also use in paper crafting so when you've um, folded over an edge it's good for pressing down there or you can use it just in your standard sewing so if you are um, sewing a seam together and it's just a little seam you might just want to give it a bit of a roll or if you're doing something with leather quite often with um, leather you, you're not always edge finishing and it can be really bulky and you quite often you glue down the seams so if you're gluing the seams you can use that to just really get it as flat as possible so that is your roller Do you have a little look at the packaging It's, it's always the simple ideas that are the best. Okay, so that is your roller. I'll pop that back in its little box. So staying with Clover is that we have a stiletto. We don't have the packaging for this one. But this is a super little tool. A Clover Hold It Precision Stiletto. This has got two different useful ends on it. You've got this one, which is the, like a, like a silicon heat resistant end that's tapered. And then you've got a more pokey end here. This one's not heat resistant, but this one is. And this is useful for all sorts of times when you might be pressing and you don't want to get too close to the iron and you don't want to burn your little fingers but you need something held in place quite precisely you can use either this edge and this is quite good for um, it, it will sort of grab the fabric a little bit so it makes it good and not too slippy so that will hold that in place and you can press up to that because that one's heat resistant or you might be using this other end here just if you're um, Janice quite often when she's sewing at the sewing machine she'll use an unpicker to get up to the machine 
Um, but this is quite nice to use as well, just to hold something in place without getting your fingers in the way. Oh, here we've got one in the packet here. Another useful tool, here it is in the packet. You've got the grippy tip, that's the one at the top, and then you've got the, yeah. And then you've got the other one at the other end for precision holding, 12.99. Super duper. So let's have a look. Oh, the light box. Um, Paul's telling me you will have to give us a call for that one. Um, the stock's not quite right on the website for some reason. Something's going wrong there. So someone's looking at that. So if you want to order one of those, the best thing to do is call the call centre uh, and have a chat with someone there. 0800 112 4433. The code you will need, although we only sell one light box, so I'm sure they'll find it for you. The code is VFXC10 7999. But if you say that you're after the Notions um, light box, I'm sure they'll find it for you. So, yeah, if you're worried and you're having problems checking out your basket, then just give them a call, see what's going on. So we also have, we have a stitch ripper. These are the sort of thing that, again, you don't realise that you could do with a replacement until you use a new one and then go, oh, why have I been using that one all the time? Because they do go um, a little blunt. This one is a really nice design. It's got an ergonomic um, handle to it. This is like a soft touch plastic. You know, the one that's slightly grippy, almost feels like a silicon. And it's got a nice case on the front to keep it protected. Your standard point in your ball. I wonder if that, does that come open? No, it doesn't come open. You could almost hang that around your neck, couldn't you, somehow? I'm not sure. But this is a nice shape. I like the, like the, uh, the shape of the handle for that. But these do get blunt, so it's one of those things that is a bit of a special treat. Get yourself a new one. I did a swap. Lucy Brennan, uh, was anyone aware she did a swap before Christmas? Um, just of small items. And you make something for someone and someone makes something else for you. It's really, really lovely. Um, and when I sent mine off, I'll put someone in a new uh, unpicker. So there's your Prim Stitch Ripper for 99 so if you've added other things in your basket, pop that in as well, because you've got uh, one PMP for the day. That's not bad, is it? Let's see to add to your basket. Okey dokes. Right, stitch ripper. What else should we look at? Let's, as we were talking a minute ago about ironing, we have some silicon finger guards. We have got three, I was wondering where they are, but they're all inside each other. So you've got your silicon finger guards and silicon, you quite often get silicon with like bakeware, that kind of thing. Um, it's that kind of pliable, but this is thinner than that because I think some of my bakeware is quite sturdy and quite, si quite thick, but these aren't quite as thick as that. Um, and they're really useful for just adding on to your fingertips for when you're doing ironing and you don't want to get your fingers scalded by the iron so it means that you can touch and you can get quite close up to your iron so if i bring the iron in I'll just double check that it hasn't been on it has a bit so i won't put that on the cutting mat just in case so it means that if you're ironing you can be holding fabric and you can be ironing and getting quite close to where your fingers are without worrying about scalding just protect your fingertips yeah, so you don't need to use all three, you might just want to use one. It depends on how, what you're doing and how you're doing it. But you've got different sizes. So this is your larger one, your medium size, and the little one. Three different sizes, 449 for those three. That's right. Now, we've got also a glue gun. I love a glue gun. Let's have a look. So this is your Trimit's High Tack Mini Glue Gun. Includes three replacement glue sticks. It's ten ninety nine. Always a handy to have something like this. You'll be surprised how many times you think, oh, "I just need to glue that together." 
So it has a little stand. Shall I get it out of the packet? They heat up really quickly. And this one. All right, we're out the box. Have we got the spare glue in there? No, no spare glue. So it's got a nice little wire stand. So that because when you heat this up, if you've not used one before, this end piece here gets really hot. So you just need to be careful where you're putting that down. But this stand will mean that that just keeps that tip off, off your surface. And you insert the glue, um, the glue sticks. They're like hard, really hard glue sticks that you insert in the back. And as you press the trigger on the gun, it brings the glue forward and then the heating element heats it up and then liquid glue comes out on this side. So you just... Pachung, pachung. So that comes out with, sorry, they're laughing at my gun noises. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> and Paul's laughing because he's like, that was a gun noise. It's like, yeah, it was like the best gun noise I can make. <sighs> Don't be mean. So um, I used the, I used one of these when I made, um, I made the girls a, um, an outfit for World Book Day. That's when the glue gun comes out most frequently is World Book Day. <laughs> There's no sewing required. It's like, quick, make an outfit. And I was using it to, I'd made some gold, uh, ginger plaits. I did room on the broom and I made a plait and I was gluing it to the top of a hat and I made a cauldron and all sorts. Glue gun galore. So less than 15 pounds, well just over 10 pounds. That's a really good price. And especially as you've got your three replacement glue sticks and it holds glued items together after about a minute it sets hard but just make sure that you uh, don't touch the end and be safe don't let that touching you know touch your surfaces and don't leave it plugged in do not leave unattended but super easy to use really easy They're asking me to do a laser noise. I'm not doing a laser noise. Nice. <laughs> 10.99 for your mini glue gun. All right, Paul, what should we do next? Let's have a look. Oh, there's a magnetic bowl over there. Should we do that one? I like a magnetic bowl. I love, love, love a magnetic pin cushion. Well, it's not a pin cushion, but a pin dish pin storage so this is a metallic dish you hear it going ding ding and it's got a giant magnet on the back which is useful in two different ways one for keeping your pins and I did pink, pick up some pins out of a pin cushion look how strong that magnet is I tried I was tragic I tried to make my own pin dish because I thought right well I'll get a pretty pretty dish and stick some magnets on the bottom it didn't work magnets weren't strong enough um, so those will keep all your, your pins in there and it's nice when you're working you can just effectively just throw your pins as you're going along in the direction and it will catch them if you like so it's got a really good strong magnet you can see they're not coming out and with one that i've got at home i find that when i drop all my pins on the floor i use it to just pick up all my pins because i am sometimes a little clumsy so that's quite nice you can just hoover them all up that's good right now it will stick to the set apparently where am i going will i go back here let's see if that's magnetic oh yes it is look at that <gasps> oh look at that that's really strong that's super strong i wouldn't hang off it but it is <laughs> it is yeah, you see i would say that's a really good magnet i like that one Keeps all your pins. So four ninety five. That's a really good price. Nice red, shiny red. You're not going to lose that in your workroom. That's four inches across. Looks looks good with the yellow pins as well. You don't have to just put pins in there. You could put your safety pins. Your quilt. Oh, it would be nice with your quilters curved safety pins. I would have a dish just for those. That would be nice. So then when you're quilting and you're going along and you need to take your pins out, um, you just take them out as you go and chuck them in there. So that's 4 95 So um, talking about pins, 
Uh, we have got a wrist pin cushion for you. Oh, I see if I'd have known, I would have put some fake tan on for you rather than being oh, like my watch. Actually, I would have that on my left hand. So as you're sewing along, I know a lot of people use a wrist pin cushion because then you know exactly where your pins are. And oh, I really should start using one because I tend to sew and make on one table and then, uh, sorry, I cut and press one place and sew on the other and no matter where I am, the pins are in the opposite place. And I would be really tragic and I would put pink on one side because I've got multicolored pins. I'd have different colored pins in different, si different parts of the flower. It's nice, it's nice, firmly, firmly stuffed. Got a pretty button in the middle and nice, easy to get on and off. Only four ninety-nine. You get left or right-handed. Look at that. Oh, look, we can wear it on either hand. <laughs> so it's your pink floral wrist pin cushion. I'll take all my pins out, throw them in the dish. Okie dokes. Now we have. Let's have a look at these. Let's have a look at the Orofil threads. These are very limited. We've not got much of these. Not got much? That's not good English, is it? We've not got many of these. This is the White Christmas range. Don't be uh, fooled. It's not just for Christmas. Orofil threads are for all times of the year. So these got metallics in there. 79.99. And it sounds like a lot of investment but actually these are um, the larger spools so you get absolutely tons of thread on these so on here these are all the 50 weight and you get 1422 yards which I think was I did to calculate that Paul's gonna have to redo it for me because I can't remember I think it well it's 1422 yards Paul so it's 1300 meters which is absolutely loads they really pack it onto there so this 50 weight thread is absolutely brilliant for things like English paper piecing um, you could use it for garment construction you would use it for subtle quilting it's not for if you're doing free motion quilting or hand quilting it will give you a really subtle effect it's if you want something bold it's probably not the right thread but if you want to do English paper piecing all sorts and you've got a good variety of threads we've got you've got your plain um, like a creamy color a silver a black you've got two variegated threads in there you've got this one here which is color 4670 oh there you go it tells you on here the meters 1300 meters so you've got two hun two of them in here of the variegated Imagine receiving this as a gift. Whoa. 79 99 for 12 of those in there. And this colour collection has been pulled together by a lady that does a lot of work for Moda. She's a designer for Moda. Okay, 79 99 Comes in a lovely box. When all your threads are gone, you've got yourself a nice storage box. They are going to last a really long time. That's a lot of paper piecing you'll be doing. Okie dogs. We have our very own sewing quarter notions bias tape maker. Eight ninety nine. This one makes a uh, twenty five millimeter or one inch wide bias tape, and I'm sure you've seen the demonstration before. You cut your bias tapes or bias strips, join them together if required, feed it through, and out the other end it comes. You can use your prim finger guards as you pull through an iron gives you a little bit of extra grip and stops you uh, burning your fingers which I promise I've never done <laughs> whilst making bias tape oh upside down so that's 25 millimeter or one inch and it's got this nice little handle that you can use to hold on one side whilst you're pulling your fed your fabric through the other side 899 for that one Blue plastic and metal. Bias tape maker. Okay. So we've got a 
beautiful pair of scissors and some snips to show you. We'll start off with the scissors. So these are rose gold. Oh, gorgeous. These have been renamed the Wendy scissors. Hemline rose gold, rose gold colour. Yeah, please do not think that you're buying golden scissors. They're not actually gold. They wouldn't be 16.99 if they were. 21 centimetres. So your blade, should we just measure for you the length of the blade? Just so you know. Wrong end of the tape measure. Oh, I've got myself tangled. Oh, I've got my thumb stuck. Right, the blade length is mm, three and a half inch blade length. And look, I've just broken the tape measure. What have I done? Oh, oh look, I fixed it. I haven't fixed it. It's fine. <laughs> so three and a half inch blade, right-handed scissors. And those are nice with the sharp points. Nice, good precision scissors. Let's have a look and see if we can cut some fabric. We've rollered, we've rotary cut, and now we're snipping. So they're a nice shape, they're nicely weighted, they're not overly heavy, so if you're worried about having, because I know some people prefer to have scissors that are metal and plastic because they're a little bit lighter. Um, they're worried about the metal scissors being too heavy, but these really aren't too heavy at all. So they're easy to handle. Okay, so nice and easy to use. Lovely sharp scissors. Nice, good, precise point at the end. And they'll be absolutely super. So thicker fabrics as well. There we go. Hemline rose gold. 21 centimetres in total, three and a half inch blade. Okay, so let's have a look at, um, we've got two pairs of snips. Let's do the smaller ones first. These are really handy to have. Again, if you're travelling around and about, um, I've got a pair similar to this in my workroom that I tend to pop in when I'm doing EPP. Uh, you'll just have, these are, these are nice, better than mine because mine don't have this safety bit on the top because they are super sharp and they're spring loaded. So you'll see when I take the case off, they're spring loaded and they open up straight away. So you have to push together to snip. So they, the default position is open. So you do have to be careful. These I tend to use mostly for snipping threads. So good to have next to your machine or if you're doing EPP stitching when I'm doing stitching them together but they are super sharp. I'll show you on here. They sound like secateurs don't they? Yeah so they're super simple to use you just use them between your thumb and your forefinger and they've got this little ridged section here for a bit of extra grip and because they're spring loaded it, it doesn't put an awful lot of stress on your hands and that just okay. so super simple and they don't take up a lot of space perfect to pop on the move 2.99 easy just pop it into your order if you've already ordered from us today there's only one pmp for the whole day 2.95 and that's until we come back on air again live tomorrow morning. So if you are a night bird and you're watching us later on the replays or on uh, YouTube or the new red button, try the new red button yet or on the app, brand new app, watch us any way you like. So, and if you are a new buyer today, should we have a look at the new, new buyer gift? So if you buy everything today, including a small pair of snips, just saying, you get yourself a free gift worth $29.98 for every new customer. You get yourself a beautiful little sewing kit and some fabric. So let's have a look at the other snips. These ones are a little bit more um, um, heavy duty than the little snips. So these ones you can use also for um, cutting out smaller bits of fabric. These are by Fiskars and we know Fiskars make wonderful scissors. 
and they've got a lovely easy to hold handle nice soft grip here and you've got a safety catch on here that you can just move back with your with your um with your thumb or finger and these are spring loaded as well so they'll open out so again if you've got dexterity issues or you've got a touch of arthritis or something then it makes just that touch easier to use and the nice thing is like the rotary cutter we looked at earlier it's good for left or right hands either or the blades will work either way and the safety catches on both sides so that means that you can operate it with your thumb if you're left or right handed which is good have a little snip with these they're good i like those so personally i would use these for something like um cutting out small bits of fabric like louisa was doing earlier that would be nice for cutting out um, your English paper piece pieces or I'd use it for something like felt making so if I've done not felt making but if I'm sewing with felt so if I've got a tiny little shape and you're just trying to get into and cut quite in intricate little shapes or the plique pieces Very accurate, I like those a lot. And like I say, they're left or right-handed and spring-loaded and they've got that nice, easy to use thumb catch on the side. And just slide it backwards or forwards. 13.99, Fiskars, easy action soft grip scissors. This part here is like the silicon that I was talking about earlier, that's just a little bit softer on the hands and a bit more grippy than a standard plastic that can be a bit slippy. Okie dokes. So those are your snips. So we've got the scissors and the small pairs of snips. And tidy up a little bit as I go. My mum always said, tidy as you go. If you looked at my house, you would know I'd very rarely listen to my mother. <laughs> it's a tip. Right, should we have a look at these, Paul? Dun, dun, dun. Right, we have a kit here. Let's just have a look. Oh. We have got a rainbow selection of snaps in a box. $34.95. Again, I love when you buy products and it comes with a storage box. So these are your prim colour snaps box set. Includes 300 snaps. How many colours have we got in here? Two, four, six, eight, ten colours. So it comes in a nice handy box, lockable. So you've got your two bits here, and then, oh, 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 it's all going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. Let's have a look, we'll have a look in the overhead camera, 34.95, for all of your snaps. It's great for, if you're making little bags or little purses, you might be making like a little needle minder or something all great for children's clothes as well I think we've used them on bibs before or fastenings just to make it easier for children to gain independence and to be dressing themselves or poppers sometimes a little bit easier than a button so we've got those um, in order to make these oh look the box has come with little dividers so that you can change how big each of your um, sections are. Oh, I like that. Flexible storage. I love it. Okay, in order to put your press studs in, you'll get two different parts to your... all your different bits. Uh, easier said than done, finding all the bits. No, not that one. Believe me, you get lots of different... you've got different parts that you join together rather than filtering around in there you will need the pliers in order to attach these to your project you'll need a set of pliers they're part of the prim love range which is the lovely turquoise and you put in you've got these two little cups at the end that you put your pieces in and it all comes with instructions so don't worry so that's 12.49 
So you put your parts in and just... And the nice thing is that with your storage case, you can then close them up. So just these are spring loaded, but don't worry, there's nothing dangerous there. Oh, there's a plastic clip somewhere. Is this the one, Paul? No, nope, don't look at that then. Keeps them all together and then they can just slot in into your case. 12.49 for that. And then separately, all of your press studs. Pliers, 12.49. Like in those. Okay, so let's have a look um, at some magic clips. We've got two different sizes today. We have big and small, big and small. So these are your larger ones. You get 12 in a packet for these, 15.99. So the nice thing about these is the, well, the size of them is good and you'll see also even with the smaller sizes that they are a really good size but you can get nice and up close with the clips um, up to your sewing machine and up to your iron because these are metal on this part so that you can iron up to those. I think we've got a video of these. We're going to show you in action. Here we go. So those will go under your presser foot, the side of your presser foot, so you don't need to remove them as you go along. So useful sometimes in things like bag making is you really don't want to take your clips out and you're taking them out at the last minute, but it's still a little bit too early. Okay, so you can go up to an eighth of an inch from your needle, where your needle goes through. And they've got lots of useful markings on there. They've got a quarter of an inch, a half inch, and five eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's fifteen ninety nine. That's for the large ones. You get twelve of those. Again, on the small ones, these ones are again a pack of twelve. These are thirteen ninety nine. And let me just bring in the large, just so that you can see a different what the difference in size is. So it's quite a big difference. So these ones at the bottom are your large, and then these ones are your small, $13.99. And the markings on this are half inch and um, five eighths of an inch. Again, you can get an eighth of an inch from your needle, if that makes sense. You need that eighth of an inch clearance. Okay, so those are your small at $13.99 for 12. So you've got your small and your large. Right, we have needle threader. Yeah. This we've had on air. Have, Paul, have we had it since day dot-ish? It's been around quite a long time. And it is a needle threader. So, so useful. Absolutely brilliant. So what you do is you drop your needle into the device and your thread and it will automatically thread it for you. 5.95. You use it all for all sorts of needles and it just there's a little there's just like a little pokey thing if you like. I'm going technical today. A pokey thing that actually pushes the thread through the eye of the needle. So you use the white side for thinner thread and the black side for a thicker thread. And you just, you pop your needle in with the eye downwards, not the eye upwards, that won't work. You're gonna get your eye downwards and then you slide across. So you lay your thread across the middle and then you slide across. So if you're doing something like um, uh, embroidery floss, you can do more than one thread if you like. So if you're doing two threads or three threads, you can do those as well. And some threads are can be super tricky. So can we see behind? You can just see the, the needle that just pops through. So your thread goes through here. Well, we've done wool and all sorts. 
and sometimes just I think sometimes when the light is really bad um, it can be quite difficult or um, if you're tired and your hands aren't working or your eyes <laughs> my eyes are going so something like with you when you're squinting and it's just not comfortable something like this is really super simple just makes things so much easier and if you're worried you've got all your instructions in here as well so we've got here um, in several different languages don't look at this and think oh my word that's very complicated it's in four different languages five different languages um, but it's got a good uh, good description but also your good um, diagrams to show you exactly how that's working so dropping in it dropping your needle in push it across and pull it out so 31st of October on YouTube so if you're not aware if you're new to sewing quarter all of our shows get saved onto YouTube so that you can go back and search them and if you are Facebook friendly um, on our fan page um, there's a lovely lady called Anna and she has pulled together a full history of when all of our shows are so you can search and have a look and you can see everything's being loaded up onto YouTube so if you want to if you've missed any of our demos or anything like that you can go on and see what we've been up to so demo for this Paul did you say 31st of October good demo for that on the 31st of October okay all right oh and this is good it comes in a little case look at that I like and look a little bit of storage in there you can put some needles in that's good talking of needles you can go in there we have a bundle of four different sets of needles so what have we got here we have got um, chenille and embroidery and we've got size 11 and 12 in the embroideries and they've got colored eyes and then we have some chenille uh, ones as well again in the red and blue okay so 596 you get all of those together that's a good price how many needles have we got in total one one two three four five six 24 needles because i think there's six in it six in each packet okay so we have a look at those Okay, 5.96. Right, we've only got a few more minutes. What shall we have a look at? Oh, let's look at this lonely little friend who's sitting in the corner here. <laughs> Not many of these. <laughs> An elephant. We're selling elephants. <gasps> now, luckily... It's a, oh, it's a tape measure and luckily it's not pulling his trunk because that would be really mean. You actually pull one of his little feet. That's so cute. Made by Prim. My grandmother used to collect elephants and used to love all elephanty things. And she said you always need to make sure that their trunks are facing upwards. So the end of the trunk's got to be facing upwards. So we have a nice lucky elephant here. Beautiful little crocheted case. What a great present. Oh. Got someone starting out. That's a nice present for someone. A new skill for the year. So is that a one and a half metre, I presume, Paul? Tape measure. Let's say I'm presuming it is. Made by Prim. Okie dokes. You're liking him. So we also have... Mm, a loop turner don't have the one in the packet somewhere so the prim loop turner this is one of our most popular products and we're missing or do we double use we've got two wooden rods a metal rod there we go right get them all in the right order so I don't know how many of you have struggled when you are turning through loops but it can be really quite frustrating uh, so uh, these loop turners and this one is inside out or the wrong already turned through the right way so I'll just turn that through and all you do again they have um, instructions on the packet so I'm not sure where the packet's gone but you take your loop or your tube if you like 
and you've got three different sizes, and you place that inside your, um, your thing that you need to turn through. And then you poke your wooden skewer through, and then you can just slide that down. Oh, I've got it a bit tangled. You slide through. It's so quick and so simple. And then pull it through. And it's turned through nice and simple. And you've got different sizes here for different sized loops that you might need to turn through. So these are prim. You've got a large, medium and a small. Three different sizes on there. And the amount of time that I've spent struggling just trying to pull it through and I've wrecked fabric and I've got really cross. So you've got your three different size tubes. That's $7.99. All done on that one. So just a quick update on the light boxes for you. Um, hopefully you can add it to your basket now if you're trying to order online. If you are having problems, do give the call centre a call. That's 0800 112 4433. And just give them a call and explain that you're after a light box and they'll add it to your order. So um, there are people in, with it in their basket, so it might be all right, but some people are experiencing problems. So yeah, if you're having problems, just give the call centre a call. So after the break, we have Louisa back. She's ready and waiting, raring to go. Uh, behind me, whew, this is the table runner that we're going to do. It's absolutely beautiful. So we'll be doing that after the break with Louisa. So make sure you check out your baskets. Remember one PMP for the whole day. Add stuff in and you don't pay any more. So we will see you after the break. Have a nice drink and we shall see you in a minute. Important announcement. Our new red button services are now live. This means that if you're watching on Freeview, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter 24 hours a day if you have an internet connected TV. At 1 p.m., you will automatically get a selection screen if your TV is connected and you can select Sewing Quarter to watch it for the rest of the day. Please consult your manual if you need help connecting your TV to the internet. Our channel number will stay the same, so we'll see you on air soon on Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. From Sunday the 6th to Sunday the 13th of January, Sewing Quarter will embark on a journey over eight days with eight guest designers exploring our own A to Z of sewing. Over the eight days, we'll explore and demo applique, bag making and colour, cave facet and liberty, pre-cuts, quilting, sewing machines, thread and beyond. Each day, we'll also be joined by a different guest designer who'll share their expertise and professional tips. The lineup includes three brand new faces. Louisa Galt, Jenny Jackson and Helen Newton make their debuts. So join us live and give them all a big sewing quarter welcome. With eight days, eight designers and an A to Z of projects and products, you can brush up on your favourite techniques and even discover something new for 2019. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. On Monday the 7th of January at 1pm, if you are a Freeview viewer, you'll need to retune your TV as our new red button service goes live. Sewing Quarter will be on air 24 hours a day for Freeview viewers too if you have an internet connected TV. To retune your device, you need to follow a few simple steps. First of all, press menu on your device or some TVs it might have a home button. Then press settings or choose the setup option. Once you're on the settings, select the retune option. Your box should then start retuning. Once your device is finished tuning, you're good to go. If you couldn't make it work or you have any other problems trying to retune, visit Digital UK co.uk forward slash retune. When you've finished, all you have to do is carry on watching Sewing Quarter without a hitch. Our channel number will stay the same, so we'll see you on air soon on Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Start the week on Monday the 14th of January with Sally Stevens and two elegant quilt designs. Sally begins at 9am with a stunning double wedding ring quilt. Cut and pieced using a clever Creative Grids ruler, you can sew the quilt at home with our choice of handy kits, including country cottage florals and rich woodland tones. 
Then at 11 a.m., Sally's back with our exclusive Rosewood quilt kit, inspired by the sumptuous Moda Rosewood fabric collection by Three Sisters. So join us for a morning packed with classic quilts, professional advice, and beautiful fabric. Monday, the 14th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. What happens when you cross a wedding ring with a pickle dish? Find out with expert quilter Emma Bradford on Tuesday the 15th of January. A combination of these two classic patterns results in the thoroughly modern quilt design in a pickle featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Curved seams and sharp points appear to float across the quilt top thanks to the contemporary use of negative space. Our kit is bursting with bold colours to bring the pattern to life. Emma will be demoing the foundation paper piecing technique used to create those impressively accurate clean lines. To make this quilt yourself and not find yourself in a pickle, tune in for Emma's top tips and wise words. Tuesday the 15th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Is for on point table runner. Louise is back and uh, we didn't scare her off which is great. So she's back and she has something that she's designed exclusively for us which is a real treat. Let's have a look at that on point table runner. Great for using all sorts of different bits and pieces of fabric. We've got some great bundles for you. Super duper. Wonderful. Right. So um, the, the one that we've got a finished sample of actually uses our Notions range, which is the middle one here. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Love all the fabric prints, all the sewing bits and pieces, all the Notions on there, sewing machines, bits of fabric, scissors, needle and thread. I like it on the sort of denim background. That one's nice. Okie dokes. So that's your on point table runner. So that one, that bundle here, we've got three different bundles for you. That's this one here, which is the middle bundle. So in each kit, you get yourself half a metre of four different fabrics. Hold on, half a metre of three. Oh yes, sorry, this one at the end has got one metre. So we've got half a metre in the scarlet again. Half a metre in the white, half a metre of the linear texture in Peacock, and a metre of your navy. So again, your colours are going to pop. So you get that with your thread, navy thread, colour 387, and you get five piece fat quarter kit, kit, bundle, stack. These are great. Look at those. The denim colour, turquoisey, white background, grey background with all the sewing machines on, and sort of your buttons and smaller notions on this one, which is the one on the back. So that includes all of that, plus some brand new instructions hot off the press. So that is $36.99, that's the sewing notions bundle. So next up, which one should we do? Should we do this one here? This is the one that we're demonstrating with today. So again, you've got, uh, oh, just making some space. So graphics for this one's coming in. Again, you get one metre of one print, uh, one colour and half a metre of the others. So your Imperial, you've got a metre of that one. And then you've got half a metre each of the Purple Mist, your white and your Azalea Linen a linear texture and your wonderful fat quarter bundle so have a quick flip through these a nice floral a smaller floral swirlies swirlies this one almost feels a little bit more batik it's not but that's kind of that feel to it and a tone on tone 
and your instructions brand new exclusive to us today 36.99 and that includes also your white thread and then we have one more option for you today this is a bit of tilde which is nice always love a bit of tilde mm. so for this one again exactly the same uh, same thing you get a meter of your green which is your sage and then half a meter each of your white your fuchsia and raspberry spot on the fuchsia though i would say is more of a candy pink than a bright bright fuchsia you get your thread and your tilde fat quarters they look so wonderful with that green and those pinks so you get one two three four five of those so 45.99 for the tilde kit including your instructions okie dokes right should we go and talk to louisa yeah i think we've got some instructions here so we're okay right yep. hello again we're sorted <laughs> welcome back how was your rest quick yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely whizzes by i couldn't believe it when i saw you offset i just went oh my word where did that hour go absolutely whizzes by and before you know it you'll be on the train back home <laughs> well yes i've got a did while you, to wait you did train didn't yes. you yes yeah yeah Right, right, so, table runner. I've just noticed that the kit we've got for that over there hasn't got the green in it, it's got a pink in it instead. Yeah, that's why I did pause, because I was a little yeah. bit... Okay, Paul, we might need to look at that. Did you catch that, Paul? There's green in this kit, rather than pink. pink. We'll work it out. We shall work it out. Okay, okay so this is set on point. So it's anyone point. who doesn't know what on point means... On point means that your squares are basically that way round instead of that way round. Right. And okay. you're sewing them with diagonal, kind of with diagonal seams. You'll get it when I see it, but um, okay. obviously they're not diagonal seams as, so, as normal, but you're sewing your blocks diagonally okay. onto each All other. All right. Well, should we have a look? Chris is very kind yeah. of bringing over the finished sample so we can see. That's right. So. So you construct three blocks with the frames around them first. Okay. And then you construct your half square triangles and make up this triangle block. And then you sew, so when you sew them on point, you sew them in rows. So that's your first row. Okay. So you sew that to that. That's your second row. So you sew in a HST block to the middle block to that block. So that's one strip. Okay. And then that's your third one. And then you sew those together. Okay. Okay, that's what's on point. Right. What I mean by okay. on point. Um, I designed this runner because a lot of fat quarter bundles tend to come with one or two with that have big prints in them that yes, you don't really want to chop up. Mix. So like the that one, I mean I have chopped it up in these ones to be honest, but the sewing machines I thought, oh you don't want to chop those up too yeah, much. Yeah, because you sort of they're there. Yeah. But it's not obvious, kind of echoing so it's nice that. to be able to. And this one you've got those. the dummy and the machine and everything. So whereas the one the demo that I'm using now, I've used all the same fabric in the three blocks. But you've got enough fabric to do whatever you want. You can have three different blocks. You can have three all the same. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So just so everyone knows at home, just to make sure, we're not sure what's happened there. But um, in the kit, it will be as I talked you through at the beginning of the hour. So there's the still of that. So you will get the pink linear, not this green. So we just need to swap those out. So I don't know what happened there. Which makes sense, to be honest, because the pink's quite pretty. The pink so, is quite pretty, isn't so it? So that's the bundle. So I had to choose between these of which ones I was going to use for the feature square. Yep. Um, so that was the biggest print. Okay. Um, and then I used the half metre of, as you would now have, the pink linear. Yep. I used that as the binding as well. Right, so that links okay. in with that. It ties it in a bit. It all comes together. Super. Okay, okay so, so and in terms of ability level, what kind of I think skill this is skill beginner. Okay. I think this is skill beginner. Good, because it it's... looks quite complicated. But it's not. Super, <laughs> that's what we like. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Okay, so we'll start off with the centre blocks. So this I've constructed using using a partial seam. Okay. Um it's just a bit different oh, my other strips gone. It's just a bit different than having top and then two sides. Okay. You use all the same, all the same length of 
strip. Obviously, right. all the cutting instructions are in the instructions, okay. all the cutting. So that makes the, the cutting a little bit more yeah. simple, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're not remembering that some are some yeah, size exactly. and some are the other. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and then I mean, how wide are these strips? These are all two and a half. Okay. So they're the same for the binding as well. So if I was going to cut all the strips together all at the same time, then you need three strips for these bits and three for the binding. So right. okay. it's quite easy oh, to easy, remember. Because you can then just sit and cut yeah. or stand and yeah. cut all of your strips. So partial seams means that, well, I'm not sure what... Because I'm not sure how often we've talked about partial seams. Well, partial seam before. means that you start in the middle of a seam and sew half the seam. Okay. In this case, you sew half the seam and then you sew the full seam, full seam, full seam, and then come back to finish off the partial seam. Okay. That's because, because if I went to try and sew that whole seam, I'd have you wouldn't be able funny to... little corners and yeah. wire seams and things, and we don't, we really don't. want to play with We avoid wire seams, seams if we can. <laughs> <laughs> so, starting with a partial seam. So, we start with a top block. Okay. And will you need the iron? Shall I, I turn will, yeah. Iron on as well. Yeah. So, I'm a pin girl, I'm afraid. I like my pins. <laughs> so, all I've done is line up the top strip with the, side, the right side of the block. Okay, and then I'm going to start sewing, but I'm going to start sewing in the middle of the seam. Okay, from and do there. you have to be overly precise or no, just somewhere? No, just somewhere in the middle, roughly in the middle. Okay. Um, and I'll do, I'll start with a back stitch just so to secure it. So when I press it back to press, the stitching won't come undone. Okay. Okay, so I'm using a quarter inch seam and I'm going to take the stitch down to about 160. Okay. Oh no, no, I'm not. Not on this one. Sorry. Not this one. This is just it's normal. It's difficult. Isn't it? We're using different <laughs> That's machines. That's <laughs> So yeah, just a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and you're using a. Uh, I'm using a quarter, quarter inch, inch foot. foot. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a front and back stitch. Oh, and the needles come under. That's useful. <laughs> oh, here we go. There's right. tests just to the use back. a machine I don't normally use. That's all oh, right. Do you need scissors or anything, or are you okay? No, I think that's the threader, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the threader I use. <laughs> this is what I, I tend to just revert to just. I saw it. Chris do it earlier. So, it's like, so just to confirm, uh, what we're looking at today, this is Louisa's uh, design specifically for us, exclusively for us, an on point table runner. Makes use of uh, three different or four different solids or planes and fat quarter bundles. This is the kit that we're using. That's the one that we've got the finished sample of. So that gets your sewing machine motifs and your notions. That's $36.99. Okay, we're all sorted. Okay. Okay, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> right, so starting in the middle of the seam, do a back stitch. Find the back stitch and then go all the way to the end. Okay. Cut the thread. But you're not back stitching the back end, stitching just at the end. that very it's first bit. It's just that bit. point where I need to press it back. Okay. So I'll just pop that there for you. Lovely. There Okay, so I always press my seams just before I've done everything. Oh, you don't want to press that. Just going to move that that way a bit. <laughs> Rearrange everything. Sorry. So I always press my seams to just relax the thread and then I'll open it up and then press it open. So you don't have to worry about that, that bit. Okay, so you leave that just top bit. unsewn yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. And then now you've got a full straight edge to sew your other one too. So you're going to carry on doing that all the way around. So I'll do that quickly. Oh, I'll just move the machine and I've managed to trap the rotary <laughs> cutter underneath. Oh, oh. That machine sews really nicely, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's a I've lovely never used. machine. I like it because it's got a really big, wide throat plate. It's good yeah. for quilting. I've got a Horizon, but yeah. Paul, have we got stock of this one? Oh, yeah, look at that. 1799. We don't see it on air very often. It's the Elna 720, excellent 720. And like I say, it's nice because it has got the wider throat plate. Um, it's more industrial, if you like, heavyweight. So if you'd like to have a look at that. 
It's got all your usual automatic thread cutter and it's got two different throat plates on there. So if you're doing a lot of sort of faster um, straight stitching. Loads and loads of, it's one of their more uh, top end machines. Absolutely loaded and absolutely loaded with um, stitches. And it's got a, um, a big stitch guide that you pop into the back of the machine. So if you need any more information, give the call centre a call or watch back and you can freeze the, um, freeze the screenshot. Or send us a message and we'll answer. We'll see what we can do. It's got a nice hum as well, isn't it? Yeah, it has got a nice sound to it. <laughs> and it's really heavy. Yeah. Okay, so last one on there. I mean, next week I might use that machine. And then when you get to the, the seam that you've pressed up on your last strip... So you're pressing, you're always pressing away pressing from that away central from section. Set. Just make sure you catch it and it doesn't come the other way. So okay. it's lying the right way when you come down to sew it. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're buying a car and you check the car door <laughs> slamming to see whether it's got a good clunk. <laughs> Okay. Oh, and then you're away oh, again. Right. So then on your okay. last one. Right, so you're now back to where so you've done I'm that partial where seam. I'm from, and then now I can fold that back down and oh, I've got a full seam. Oh, can we just see seam. that on overhead? So this is where you've started where from started. and you and sewed that way first. Yeah, and because I've put this strip on now, I've completed that whole length so I can now sew. And you sew again, as usual, from this end yeah, towards to the where middle. you stitched. Yeah. Okay. And I do a okay, back and stitch. And back stitched again. A bit. There we go. Okay. Right, and press again. Just press that. So now you've got a partially seamed, partial seamed block. Oh, I see that's a really nice thing to do because you are, like you say at the beginning, the cutting's quite yeah. simple. Yeah, that's and nice. it just looks a bit... There we go, you see that overhead? More even, I suppose. Yeah, and it is, gives a nice even yeah. result. Okay, so then you've got your three blocks. So now the fun bit. <laughs> <laughs> So now this is my favourite ever. I think it might have been the Goldsway that invented it. I'm not sure, but that's who I've taught it, learnt it from. Um, so if you want quite a few identical half square triangles, okay. then this is by far my favourite method of doing it. It's kind of foundation piecing, but without all the without nonsense. Everything. And is this included <laughs> that's in the included instructions? In the pattern, so if we have yeah. a quick look at the instructions. It's 100% to scale and you need four copies. You need four copies. Okay, so in your instructions, you've got all your cutting instructions and... Yep, yeah. so nice. your cutting instructions. Oh, you do all the diagrams as well. Oh, see, she's good, she's good. Uh, so you've got your template in the back here, and yep. that's actual size, and you need four of those. Yeah. So I've just trimmed it roughly to get rid of all the excess. Okay. Um, and you cut your, I think there's seven and a half by ten and a half pieces. Of seven and a half fabric. by ten and a half. I tend to, what have you got, fat quarters? Yeah, you'll get two out of the length of the fat quarter. So whatever the fat quarter is, so I'll fold it in half, cut your seven and a half inch strip, and then just cut that in half and it'll be ten and a half or a little more, right. which is fine. Okay. You don't need it to be exact, as long as it covers the, the paper. Okay. Okay, so you put your pattern and your white right sides together, pin these together. I tend to just put... Ooh. <laughs> I just tend to put four in. Right, so you're just going to sew along the red lines. Okay. So the way that this is drawn out, you can actually do it all in one go. Right. So you can follow that one, and then there, 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 and there. Okay. Okay? 
All right, and are you using any particular sewing I'm needle gonna, or sewing thread? No, the needle's the same needle. Um, I'm going to change the foot. Um, the needle's the same needle. I'm going to take the stitch length down to... Ah, oh, I need my other foot. Your other foot. Did that not come with the machine? In the trolley? What foot, which foot would you just like? Just a normal foot. Just a standard foot. Okay, well, we will find a standard foot for you. Let's just see. Is there anything in... No, that takes that off. <laughs> it was near the machine, but I don't think it came with the okay, machine. Okay, we will find a foot for you. Um, we'll get someone to come and do that. Um, Paul, do you want me to go and um, recap the bundles whilst we try and find you a foot and someone will bring in a foot? <laughs> okay. And then we'll do on those. So I shall take... Oh, I need to take this pink one with me. Kidokes. So the bundles that we have um, today, Louisa is working with um, this first bundle here, um, but for some reason Louisa has been accidentally given green to work with, but we've got the pink. So this is the, um, the selection with the pink in with that. So the graphics in for that one. Coming in, they're on their way. Dun, da, da. Paul's not pressing buttons. So this is your purple mist, 36.99. So you've got two meters of fabric. So this is the, the pink that you're getting instead of the green that Louisa was given. Rogue green. I mean, people quite like the green. So if you'd like some green, we sell it by the half meter online. <laughs> so just have a look on the website and see if you'd like the green. So that's 36.99 with your purple fat quarters. Okay, that's your purple mist. Don't forget your thread and your instructions. So this is the one that we've already made. So you've got your two meters of fabric. You've got your navy, your linear, your white and your scarlet, and your notions. Okay. They're really nice. Paul, can I ask a favour? Could we have a ruler on set as well, please? A ruler. And from that one is your notions. So you can make something quite similar to that, but you can chop and change because you've got half a metre of three of the fabrics. You can swap those around a little bit. It's up to you how you'd like to do those. And then the last option that we have is the tilde version. Very pretty, Forty-five ninety-nine. This one comes with five tilde fat quarters from the lemon tree range, if I'm not mistaken. No, bird pond, sorry. Not up on my tilde. See, you take some time off at Christmas and it all goes wrong. Time off shouldn't be allowed, should it? Those and your two metre of fabric are spot on and three solids. And your thread and your instructions right before we move on we have an announcement well this is exciting Louise's last project the kit that she was um, the kit um, Paul is that the kit that she did the finished sample in or the kit that she was demoing in the one that she was demonstrating in the one with the navy background the price said 50 pounds on that however However, if you give us a call, we'll honour that at 40, 44 99 There was the kit. When you add it to your basket, it will say 44 99 That's what you were making with that one. It would be 44 99 Okie dokes. Nice to have a good quick update on prices. Okay, right, should we go back to Louisa and we'll have a look at making those half square triangles in the economical, simple way? You got yourself a foot? I have got my foot. Brilliant, right. you have a foot. Okay. So. Okay, so you've got your two fabrics, you've got them right sides together. They were 10 by 7-ish. 10 and a half by 10, 7 and a half. I was yeah. listening. 10 and a half <laughs> by 7 and a half. And you've attached the paper template on the top and you've used four pins. Yep. That's right. Okay, and you're going to sew along that red line. So the needle's a normal needle. Yep. Um, but I have taken, I will take the stitch length down to about 160, 170, just so that it perforates the paper enough 
for it to come out easily. Right. Okay. Like foundation piecing. Okay. And the foot that you were missing is just, just a, a standard, standard foot. Yeah, fine. just a standard foot. So I'm going to start in this corner, or you can start in that corner, but start in this corner, corner. And you're just going to follow the red line all the way down. So then when you get to the edge, obviously there isn't a red line to match it, so I lift the needle and the foot and then just reposition it. Okay, but you're not managing not But I've not cut the thread. Cut the thread. Okay, we'll get rid of that pin. So again, raise the needle. That machine goes really fast. It does, doesn't it? No, it's quite it's nice. if you've got it on so you're not, um, not nearly quite a hair. Not quite. <laughs> It really zooms away. I love it. I tend to use this technique for lots of things, even like bigger half square triangles. I've made up the templates, so you even just getting four on a page. Right, okay. Obviously, it has to be an A4 page for my printer. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, not many of us have got printers that need that. <laughs> but it makes, I don't know, it just, and it saves you having to resize them afterwards. Yeah, because that can always be quite a frustrating yeah. thing is when you've made a load of half square triangles so to then look at them yeah. and think, oh, I've got to trim all of those. Yeah, exactly. This takes that chore out of it. See if it keeps helps if you keep on the line. <laughs> you might have to trim them down if it doesn't. Nearer keep the tortoise, <laughs> if you're worried. <laughs> yeah, I'm speeding for time. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I probably There's wouldn't go this fast time. at home. <clears throat> Oops. So to say, done it all in one go. Yeah, so, so there's no quick. stocking and yeah. starting and cutting and... Exactly, so cut the thread. Okay. Okay, so we'll take the pins out. And now you're going to cut along the black lines, so all the black lines. All the black lines, including the outside lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Woo. And I know that you probably should use a blank, a dull blade for this, but I tend to use my blades for everything. <laughs> Oops, it didn't cut very well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have to is go the a, blade bit. a bit dull, yeah. or is it just? I think it's just going through the stitching. There okay. we go. So. And then what you can also do is there's also blue lines. Okay. So the blue lines are the dog ears. So you're going to cut them diagonally. So that's to split up your two HSTs. Okay. And then you can just nip off that blue. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so that's that the little diagonal. You can nip off that blue diagonal. Okay. Off those. And then to take the papers out, I fold the paper back along the seam and give it a good crease and a good fold. Okay. So it just loosens it up. And then I push and just tear that middle bit and take that bit off. It's like a sheet of old fashioned stamps. Yes, and that bit, and then that bit should just pull away. Super. Okay, okay. that's lovely and quick, I like. So shall I just do that one more yes, time? Yes, go on, let's so see one more. Fold that bit back, give it a nice crease, rip in the middle. Oops. Oh, Put surely that's the best bit to do. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, and then, okay. I and then press. you can press. So press to the dark side. 
<laughs> so I press the seams just to... I don't know to, why, but that is always funny. I know. <laughs> press, to the, uh, press the seams just to relax the stitches and then fold it back with your fingers and press it open. And you have then gotten a nice, I think they finish at two and a half inch. I can't remember. Yeah, they finish at two and a half inch. HST. Okay, that is super quick. And like okay. we said, no trimming. <coughs> no trimming. So they're ready. They're perfect. Ready to, ready go, to and go ready to use. Okay. And you've made six of those in I've one made, go. I've made, yeah, uh, 12. 12. 12 of those in one go. Oh, yes, sorry, 12 of those in one go. So you don't actually, I think you get left with six leftovers. Okay. Um, so you need 10 for each block. So now you're going to do the HST block, half square triangle block. Okay. So here I've sewn some, oh, I've lost a bit again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've sewn these into rows already. Okay. So let me just get this the right way around. Okay, so as you can see, you have the coloured bit pointing up. So they all go, the coloured bits all go in the same direction, okay. basically. So that one I think needs... So. Yep. Okay, so these are That's just... so effective. <laughs> simply sewn um, in strips. Okay. Um, so there's nothing to match up or anything on those bits. You just do a quarter square, quarter inch seam okay. down there. But when you come to sew them together, so, before you sew them together, press the seams in this row that way, press okay. the seams that way. Okay, and did that say that in the instructions, yeah. which yeah. way to press? It doesn't okay, really so matter which way, just just alternate ways. which yeah. way you're going. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that's only bit so we can match the seams, nestle the seams in when you pin them together. Okay. Okay, so now you have got points to match here, so you want to get your points nice and sharp. So the way I do that is I take a pin Pin it through. Ooh. Pin it through the top of that okay. triangle, and then take it through to the back of that triangle. So those are matched, and then I'll just put the pin perpendicular. Very nice. Okay. okay. And you'll do that at each junction. I'll do that at each junction. I am a pin girl. I like. My <laughs> well, when you're matching seams, it does. Yeah. And also you've got, and then you've got your seams going in the opposite direction, so they should nestle okay. in nicely. Okay. And then I'll put a pin in, well. And you'd still do a pin on this side well, as well? Well, maybe not that side, but the end bit I would. Okay. Just to Try and make, make sure. sure it matches up. Yeah. Okay. And then you will find, if you do fold that back, then that should line up with the edge. Just oh, because right. Okay. Can we see that? Yes, we can just see that on there. So the, the, the top part of this shorter this square, row, yeah. the very corner, matching up with the seam allowance. Yeah. So it's just because it's been folded in the other direction. So that's where it should start. Okay. So then we're going to do, oh, change the foot. So you're going back to your quarter of an inch back foot. Back to my quarter inch foot and my quarter inch stitch. Okay. So then we're just going to sew that. And then, when so you start sewing, not that slow. And then, when you get to the point, you're going to sew right where you put your pin, and then that will make sure that you get you catch that point. Right. Okay. So that's why you put your pin in the point, so you okay. can see where that point is. So you're just going to go straight over that top of that point. Finish off. Oh, cut. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so could we, I'm not sure we'll be able to see it that easily, but just can we see in here where the stitching's gone across on the top of that point? Oh, yes, yep, that will work. So if we just angle it, we'll get there so eventually. There. So it's, it's just so that <laughs> line of stitching might oh, be able to see. Yeah that line of stitching goes across where that V shape is, if you like. So when you open it out... Well, in theory... <laughs> in theory, fingers crossed. Yay! We've got matching points. Oh, looks good. Okay. Super, so, so I'll I let you press, press that. that. So again, just press the seam 
the, the stitches to relax them, fold it open and press. And does it matter which way you're pressing? No, you're just no, I'm just, away. whichever's easier, so I just press okay. away. And do you tend to press open or do you pre tend to press away? I tend away? to press towards away, really. Oh, yes. um, sometimes if I'm doing something that's a lot of bulk and a lot of seams match in the same place, I'll try and open those up okay. just to reduce the bulk, really, if I'm going to quilt it. So again, same as before, so take your pin through the point of that triangle and take it through to the point of that triangle. Okay, so this part is where you just need to take a little bit yeah. more time just to yeah. make sure that just you find that sure point. So you see that, that, because that seems ironed pressed the right way, now that you can see that those two match Yeah, up. that's a good reference point, isn't it? Yeah, of where it should start. A project like this is really nice just for brightening up a room. I know so many people have got dining rooms that you don't use. Yes. <laughs> and it's the kind of room that sort of sits there empty and it would be nice to just dress a room in that yeah, way exactly. or something like on the side on a sideboard. Yeah, or if you've got a hall in the table, uh, a table in the hall. Yeah, that would be nice in the hallway. Yeah. Paul's just moved house and he's looking for furniture but he's a bit worried what he's going to find in the charity shop so maybe something like this will just brighten it up or hide that ring stain that'll be on the table okay so again I've gone through the point and that's okay. like that and then I would do that all right well I'll let you press that one And that one doesn't matter about points. It's but you've just got to make sure that the sure coloured ones are yeah. all facing. Which that is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's okay. your last yeah. HST block. Okay. okay, so you're making four of those. So you make four of those. So you place them like that. Oops. That comes together quite nicely. It does, doesn't I know it? this is and a bit quickly. of a blue Peter moment, but, <laughs> but it's I mean, quite a simple yeah. process. It's like you say, it is something that someone who's quite new to quilting could. Yeah, do pretty easily, really. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, and there's the other one. So but don't forget, if you're at home, <coughs> the bundle that we're pink. selling today comes with the pink, which I've left behind. But it comes with a pink. So I'll get the pink for you just so that you can <coughs> see what that would look like. Just. So I think the pink's lovely because it pinks up the pink in there and the little flower. Let's see if we can just. It's quite nice with pink. The green is nice, but actually, I prefer it with the pink. Yeah. And it is that pink, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it, you're right, it does pick out the pink in that little... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very popular, this one. That's nice. nice, it's quite fresh. Yes. Right, so now you're going to sew them in rows on point. Okay. So we're going to sew those two together. Yep. Then those three, and then those two. Okay. okay. All right, we've got about 15 minutes. Okay. So. Um, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> decisions, decisions. It's always that point where you think, right, 15 well, minutes, Well, I just wanted we to um, show you how I put the border on. If I do one of these first. Yep. So when you're sewing these together, sew with the HST block on the top so you can see where you're sewing because, again, okay. you're going to have to go through your points. Okay. And okay. the HST, for anyone who is new, new, is half square triangles, which are the little ones yep. that we've yeah. made with the paper foundation. We've had a message from Janice. Louisa, you have a wonderfully calm and detailed way of demoing. Very easy to understand the process. Aww. She is so right. She's very you. organized <laughs> and prepped and very clear on what you're saying. And that's not bad for your first day. Oh, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> that's all right, because I know it can be so nerve wracking. <laughs> so nerve wracking, but it's all cool, calm and collected. OK, so a quarter inch seam again. And again, you're just going to go through the points where you put your pins in. Check that your seams are going in the right directions. OK. 
Okay. Do you want to press that, or do you want me to press that? Yeah, you, you press that then, and I'll. Would you, would you like that? We just finish this one way? length. Uh, we're towards the block the, of the block. Yeah. Okay. Just so because it's away from the all the seams. Almost like I've done that before. Man, you should see my ironing pile at the moment. It's terrible. <laughs> I've come away from being away, and whilst most things are clean, everything's crushed. <laughs> just think, oh, man. You're still an ironer, then. And I like ironing. I, well, I don't like ironing, but I do iron. The satisfaction. Oh yeah. I like the satisfaction of, of having ironed clothes, but I don't actually yeah, love the process. Yeah, I don't like ironing. <laughs> well, I don't like... I, you know, I don't mind ironing, I just begrudge the time it takes. Yes. That's when you put an audible book on or something. <laughs> or sewing quarter, of Or course. sewing quarter. <laughs> okay. So many ways to watch now. Red button, app, YouTube, Sky, two, website, preview. <laughs> <laughs> Choice is yours. I'm just going to do this roughly so that we've just got okay. a length. So I just want to put, show you how to put the border on. Welcome to all the new buyers. Lots of new people today. How did you find us? Because you, you know what? A lot of people I find uh, join the Facebook fan group and go, hey, what is so important? And I think, oh, you've joined a fan page and you've not found us before. So watch. Come and watch if you've not watched this before. Right. Okay, so I'll oh, press. Looks. Don't forget, if you're new, you get a special offer added to your shop. So again, if you press towards the block, then that means that your seams are going to be in opposite directions when you come to sew the seams, to, uh, the, blocks, okay. the rows together. Okay, so now you're going to sew. Where are we? So then when you, because you've pressed that seam that way and that seam that way, when you come to press, sew those together. Oh, we like it. Then that will be nice and... Nestle in there. And these ones are all right because, again, you haven't got any, well, you've got that points to match. But okay, so, okay. So if I pretend. Pretend. <laughs> imagine. Imagine that this is all okay, together. Okay, we've got 10 minutes, so don't need to rush too much. Okay. Oh, well, maybe I'll sew those together then. Yeah, go on. Why not? <laughs> Why daring. not? So whilst Louise is doing that, should we talk about what we could pad it with. We've got some Thermalam. I think I might even have some. Now I've got it on the other side. I don't know where my Thermalam's gone. Thermalam's on the other side. Um, we've given Louisa some Thermalam to use. So if you did want to use it as a table runner, um, it's got some like thermal qualities and you're not going to scorch everything. Here's your uh, information. That's your Thermalam. So in one meter for only 4.49. Okay, so that's your thermalam. Um, and if you need to piece the thermalam, because it's quite a, this uses a packet of thermalam, but it's in an odd shape, so you'll need to piece those together. Um, Louisa has done a, like a herringbone. Did you use a herringbone stitch? A ladder stitch, a ladder stitch just to sew them together. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you could use some of this bat batting tape, heat press batting tape. It's almost like, like a wonder web but it's only, um, I think it's only sticky on one side. So you can um, join the, the two halves together if you've got to piece your batting. So just make sure that you test your iron first. So you press over it, but just make sure that you've got the correct temperature for your batting. Okay. Okay, okay. so you're together. I think I've got some thermal amber that's over there. It's just white. It was really nice to quilt as well. Yeah, it's not too thick, no. is it? Because I quite like dense quilting when I do a table runner so that it's just flat and it's not nothing's going to fall over. Yeah, because you don't <laughs> want to put a vase on yeah. it or a pot or something and it be all So that wiggly. one I t um, quilted with parallel lines. Um, I can do wiggly lines as well. That's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Straight or wiggly. <laughs> Okay, so if we pretend that those two are on there, okay. that's your sewing. So I don't take the white triangles off yet. 
Okay. So if you try to trim that down and then put your borders on, you're going to be dealing with half sewn bias edges and it's going to be messy. Right. And it also gives you a good sewing line to attach your border. Okay. So if you get your border strips. So these are longer than they need to be. So okay. I So that's just cut from the width of fabric. Yeah. And I pin the centre to the centre point first. And you're going to pin, but just what I do is I pin roughly. You need a quarter inch. So that's your quarter inch there. So you're going to take your fabric to the top of so that So you, your fabric isn't going along the no. sewn seam line. It's going about a quarter of it's an inch It's going a quarter of an inch above. OK. All right. What I tend to do is put in a couple of stitches just to get it in line. And then I sew from the actual from the other side. So I'll pin this roughly first. Oops. Like that. And then I had to turn it over and repin it. Okay. So that I can repin through that line and that sewing line there is going to be your sewing line now. Right, that becomes your guide. Okay, that's going to be your guide. So you obviously won't be able to see that on the other side of the fabric. So if we pin that and then we're just going to sew along there. Okay. I won't do it now. But you're taking the pins I'll out take the pin from out the other out side go, yeah. and pin on this so side. So I pin on that side. Like okay. that. Okay, so you've got your quarter inch, you know your quarter inch, your fabric strips a quarter of an inch up. So that's in line. And then you're just going to sew along that sewing line. If you okay. want to sew uh, <laughs> this side, just slightly to the left, to the left not to the white, yeah. yeah, to the other side. To the main body. Yeah. Okay. And then once that's sewn, then you can trim off your white triangles and open it out and your border will be nice. Right, okay. And you should have your so points. Oh, that's nice. So then it doesn't really matter whether this is slightly more than a quarter of no. an inch. It's just yeah. enough to create. Yeah. As long as you sew through your points on this side. Oh, not so well, oh, yeah, through your points. So you're going to still, as long as you keep to that line. Okay. Then that will take in your points there. And then you'll get nice sharp points on your borders. Yes, nice, nice and neat to be able yeah. to see those white triangles to still yeah. have their points on on those yeah which is in here so as that comes in to still have that point is nice okay so you do that on so you do sides. that your two sides and then i would take a long ruler and trim this down so that this edge carries on with this edge so okay. it's a 45 degree edge that so if you use your big quilters ruler to trim that off okay and then you would then take another I think you take the other strip, cut it in half, because you only need a half, and then you would pin that along there, sew that to there. Okay. And then the other half you would sew onto that. Onto your other side. So that gives you your two end points on your main one. Okay. Okay, so All you right. do that both ends. And then you quilt it. So as I said, I mean you don't have to do as much quilting as I did on there. Um, you can just quilt around the main blocks. And do you tend to do you tend to go to machine quilting or hand quilting? What do you prefer? Because if you like doing so much hand stitching, if you're doing a project um, like this, I would if do you were doing machine. this under your own steam <laughs> with lots of time, you'd go I to like machine. machine yeah, um, as I, said, I, I do like a flat runner or placemat sort of thing. I like it to be quite flat. If I did hand stitching, I think it would be quite bumpy yep and okay. not the stable and flatters yeah something. and when you're making your quilt sandwich how do you baste do you hand baste spray baste i use curved safety pins right okay i always use curved safety oh paul pins. have we got curved safety pins in stock he's gonna have a look for us <laughs> okay so you use just your curved, I just safety, use pins. curved safety pins yeah right okay. and then if i was going to do something like this where i was going to do it quite densely i would start in the middle um, I'd put masking tape or a guide down the centre of the block okay. So um, and use that as a guide. And then this just happens to be, my walking foot is a quarter, uh, half an inch wide. Right, OK. So I've just used, I've sewn the first line and then I've used that line as a guide against my foot 
yeah. to do the next line. And so when you do, um, when you're doing matchstick quilting, do you sew all in the same direction, or do you I go would, yes. up one way and down the other? No, I do all these in the same direction. So I start in the wadding, I sew, I end in the wadding, the break thread, okay. and then I'll start again at that side. So I'll do that side, and then I'll turn it and do the other side. Right, okay. And how much gap do you? How much excess wadding and backing do you um, tend to, to use? One or two inches. Okay. Not a lot, really. Okay. The runner is probably one or two inches. Yeah, I guess because it's not quite it's so small, yeah. unwieldy. Yeah. Okay. And if you do find that doing it that way, you can sort of push it if it does bunch up a bit. Just encourage Which it probably shouldn't, gently. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, what about binding? Binding. How do you do your binding? So binding, I do two and a quarter, uh, two and a half inch strips. Okay. Um, fold it in half, and then sew it to the machine. Sew it to the front of the quilt and turn it round and hand stitch it down to the back. Hand stitch it to the back. Hand stitch oh, it to the back, yes, I know. I was tempted when I was doing this in a rush to machine, but I know. Machine. <laughs> machine, if you're short on time, go for the machine. Fab. Okay, anything else that anyone needs to know? Should we have a quick look at the instructions for anyone that's considering purchasing? Because we've if not really... If you did want to make it longer, um, you have got enough of the fat, in the fat quarters for more HST uh, half square triangles and more feature blocks. Okay. You would probably need a bit extra for the strips, the, the borders the and borders. binding. The borders, okay. Um, but if you did want to make it five blocks long, you have got enough feature fabric for the... Okay, well that's good to know that you could just add a bit more in, but yeah. still get... Because you could just buy the extra backing and yeah. one of the extra colours. So, super. Okay. Thank you. You made it through your first day. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. May we see you again? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, yeah that would be really fun. lovely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Have a really safe journey home. Thank you and you. <laughs> lovely to see you. Right, I'm going to take this with me and the pink. What else do I need? I think I've got everything. Should we have a quick look at the Thermalan? Because I spoke about the Thermalan, but it's very exciting to see. You're ready. A packet of whiteness. So you get a metre of this. Is it, Paul, is it a metre by one metre? Is it a square of Thermalam? We'll see if we can find out for you. That's 4.49. Uh, it's a compressed fleece. So it's not like, you know, when you buy, or traditionally you would buy wadding off the roll and it's big and fluffy. This is nice and compressed and it's got thermal properties. So it's good if you want to put warm pots or whatever down warm plates that you've warmed in the oven, which I always forget to do. Or cold plates, cold food. Uh, so that's 4.49 and you'll need to join that together. And this is where your heat press batting tape is super. So just pop that out of the packet for you. So it's like, oh, it's all taped down, but it's, it is like a web that you place on top. It says, Irons without a Teflon. Oh, without a Teflon plate. Sorry, they put the word plate on a different line, which they didn't need to. <laughs> then it says to use your wool setting on your iron. So do just check. So you just lay your two bits of batting up against each other and you can place the tape on top. And it just means that you'll get a nice flat seam between the two. Um, and it won't gunk up your iron or anything. Um, it's a good product to have. Saves a job. It's quicker than stitching by hand. Okay, have a quick look at these bundles. How long have we got left? Just a couple of minutes. We'll quickly run through what we've got here. So the bundle that um, Louisa uh, was working with today is this bundle here, but with the pink, not the green. If you do fancy the green, have a look online and see. Um, we'll have some available, I am sure. Uh, so this one here, you have yourself two metres of fabric plus your fat quarter bundle, 36.99. Most popular today, brand new instructions today from Louisa. She's designed it especially for us. Reminds me of the song from Neighbours, but I'm not going to sing it. The girls were getting me to sing something in the car last night, and I thought, you know what, I am a bad singer. So stop me if you hear me singing. Those are nice. Graphics up there for you, instructions and whatnot. This is the one that we had the finished sample made with the navy. There it is. And as Louisa said, you can swap around. So you could swap the blue and the red if you wanted to. You've got a bit of flexibility. 
I like the white um, that she's used in the half square triangles, but you could swap that around as well. Depends on the kind of effect that you're after. So this one has your notions, fat quarters. Very nice. And you know what? You could also make like a, a mat for your sewing machine. That would be nice with these fabrics because you've got plenty left over. Or some storage. Nice with the sewing machines. So there's your graphics for that, 36.99 for the sewing notions. And then finally, we have the Tilda version with the greens and pinks. Tilda is always popular. Comes with your greens, your pinks and your whites. And then your Bird Pond Collection Fat Quarters. Beautiful Tilda. $45.99. So those are your three bundles. Right, over the after the break, we're still on the letter O oh, oh, for overlockers. So I'm gonna have a quick run through for you on some overlockers and some patterns and some fabrics. So I hope you will have yourself a cup of tea and come back and join me and you might learn something new and you might be tempted to buy yourself a little overlocker. It will transform your sewing, I truly promise. 2019 will be a year of brand new treats and surprises here on Sewing Quarter. We'll guide you through the latest fabric releases, iconic names including Liberty, French General, Tilda and Tula Pink, plus Cindy from Riley Blake pays another visit. Also live in the studio will be Kay Fassett and Brandon Mabley, who along with Lynn Goldsworthy, Linda Clements and Robin Ruth launch quilt patterns exclusive to Sewing Quarter. Working with our sister sewing magazines will continue to transform designs into brilliant kits. Familiar faces helping you master the techniques include Sally Stevens, Charlotte Newland and Cara Ackerman. New experts, Helen Milton, Jenny Jackson, Louisa Galt and others join the Sewing Quarter family. Thousands of the latest products from sewing machines and notions to dress forms, books and storage will be demoed live on air. Jill Rep from June Taylor returns with clever gadgets and genius accessories and will have more gift ideas for you and your loved ones. And, as if that wasn't enough, we're thrilled to announce the release of our premier Sewing Quarter fabric collection. We can't wait to share our exclusive prints with you. So tune in daily from 8am and shop online at www.sewingquarter.com. Watch it, love it, sew it in 2019. Here at the Sewing Quarter, we love to share our favourite products with you. From bestsellers to brand new discoveries and those essential but unsung heroes. And of course, the forgotten gems. I love chatting about my own latest finds and long-term favourites. So every Wednesday, I'll be sharing my personal top picks and telling you a little bit about why they've won a place in my must-have list. You can also find out more about my top picks on the website, gathered together in one really convenient place for you to make it even easier to shop for yours and my favourite sewing accessories. All you have to do is click on the shop button and my top picks will be the first thing that you will see. So make yourself a cuppa, keep your eyes peeled and every single Wednesday you'll discover Wendy's latest top picks. I'll see you then. Have you been watching Sewing Quarter but still thinking about placing that first order? Then the new year is the perfect time to start shopping with our brand new offer for brand new customers worth $29.98. Not only will we send you two metres of fabric worth $14.99 but also the official Sewing Quarter sewing kit also worth $14.99. The kit contains everything you need for sewing on the go and those last minute fixes. Simply make that first exciting purchase with no minimum spend and we'll add these gifts to your order automatically while stocks last. So start shopping and let us wish you Happy New Year with these Sewing Quarter Essentials. What happens when you cross a wedding ring with a pickle dish? Find out with expert quilter Emma Bradford on Tuesday the 15th of January. A combination of these two classic patterns results in the thoroughly modern quilt design in a pickle featured in Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Curved seams and sharp points appear to float across the quilt top. 
thanks to the contemporary use of negative space. Our kit is bursting with bold colours to bring the pattern to life. Emma will be demoing the foundation paper piecing technique used to create those impressively accurate clean lines. To make this quilt yourself and not find yourself in a pickle, tune in for Emma's top tips and wise words. Tuesday the 15th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Tune in on Wednesday the 16th of January when Victoria Pete and Fiona Hesford are on hand with ways to stay warm indoors and out. Victoria is live at 10am with a simply joyous pickle dish quilt designed by Jo Avery. She'll be using vibrant cashmere garden fabric collection and fun foundation paper piecing technique to make this modern classic quilt. Then at 11am, Fiona is here to show us how to sew a trio of luxurious faux fur accessories, a chic hat, stylish scarf and charming vintage star bag. As always, Fiona has top tips, this time on working with faux fur for sewing skills. So for cold weather projects that make winter worth it, join Victoria and Fiona from 10am on Wednesday the 16th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Thanks to everyone for tuning in for Louisa. Uh, she felt really welcome and she's done a couple of really great, great demos and I hope you've liked the things she's come up with. She's a great designer and it's been really lovely to have her with us. Uh, so our last hour for today is still an O for overlockers. And if you are new to sewing or you are just picking up your new skill or you're looking to push things onto the next level, an overlocker is a really, really valuable thing to have in your sewing room or in the corner of the kitchen or wherever you happen to do your sewing. Um, it is so useful for not just finishing but also constructing garments and it's not just for knit fabric so don't think it's just about oh well I don't sew with jersey. It's for all sorts of uses so don't be frightened. So today I thought I would show you a few bits and pieces on the 664 Pro. Um, I've also got the 664 with me today um, but we can show you those. I've got some stitch samples and um, I'll show you what it looks like when an overlock is working. So today, um, the 664 Pro overlocker is 449, and with that, um, you get a, hundred, a load of um, bits and pieces, so tools and whatnot that come with those. So that's your 664 Pro. Should we have a look at the still for that? So there's all sorts of information on there for you. So we've got a tilting needle clamp, which we will look at, which is really, really useful because that's one of the difficult things that um, people find when they're dealing with an overlocker. Uh, it's got a program display panel, which is a really great reference for if you're trying to remember which stitch is which and what your settings are, because that can be a little bit more complicated. With a sewing machine, you just press a button and these days they kind of just do everything they need to do. Um, but with this, with overlockers, it's a little bit more intricate. So that's a really great reference to help you remind what you're doing. Um, you have at the back, you have a tel telescopic antenna system to help feed your threads. You've got your individual thread dials. You've got, um, you can control the width of your cutting. Um, and it's got a differential feed and the differential feed is absolutely brilliant. That helps an awful lot when you are dealing with jersey fabrics, particularly your knit fabrics. It controls how the fabric feeds through underneath the presser foot. So you've got an accessory box with all sorts of bits and pieces in there. So if you want to use standard threads rather than big cones of threads, you can uh, adapt to use those. That's a closer look at your program. So I will have a look at that when we go through. Okay, so that's your 664 Pro at 449 pounds. Okay, so should we quickly have a look at the graphics for the non-pro version? It's pretty similar. There's just a few things that you don't get. So you can see that you don't have the reference panel here and there's a few other bits and pieces. That's at 269. Okay. Right, okay, so should we have a look at the machine? Um, they are essentially the same size machine, same chassis. Um, it's just got a few extra bits and pieces. It's a nice weight of a machine. 
um, it's got a good feel to it. They're quite a sturdy uh, machine. Uh, in terms of um, what's what, you have here, this is your program reference on here that shows you what all your different settings are. And we'll have a look at that a little bit further um, a bit later on. Um, Oh, sorry, I've just knocked that off. And you've got a dial here that will change that for you. Really handy. Okay, and going along here, these are your tension dials, and you've got a different colour for each thread. So you've got your left needle and your right needle, and you've got your upper and lower loopers for here. And these are tension dials that just turn with a finger push. So they're nice and easy. And you've got some thread guides here. And coming down to the bottom of the machine here, you've got two needles. You've got a left and a right needle so that you can do a four thread overlock stitch. And it comes with a standard foot on the machine. Um, in terms of the front of the machine, you've got here, this is a, a waste bucket so that when you're trimming, because the, the joy of an overlocker is that it will not only finish a seam, but it will also trim it at the same time. But it does mean that you get an awful lot of bits and pieces of fabric, little bits of fluff. So this tray is really helpful because all the bits just go into that tray, which is easily removable. That just sits on the front. So when you take that off, um, you then have this front cover that if you slide to the side and forwards, that exposes the inside here, which is where you thread the lower and the upper uh, loopers on the inside. And you've got a, um, a really handy colour reference for your stitches. So remember at the beginning I showed you that you had your left and right needle and your upper and lower loopers, those are colour coded, the yellow and the green. So you follow the path on this diagram here that shows you where the yellow thread goes and where the green thread goes. And what you might like to do when you're just starting out and you're worried about threading your overlocker is use a different colour thread in each of the spools. So then so, for example, I'd put a white and a black and a red and a green, and then you can follow those through to try and get you used to threading your overlocker. Because I think, for me, the biggest tip I can give you with your overlocker is learn to thread it, take out the threads and re-thread it. Take out the threads and re-thread it. There is a really good... Um, we've got grey threads on here at the moment. Paul's just going to put those um, through on the graphic for you. Those are the grey. Grey is a great all-purpose colour. You get four of those, they're a thousand metres each, 31.49. I tend to use grey most frequently. Uh, we've also got white and black and navy, but the grey I use an awful lot. Um, a really great tip is um, for pulling threads through. You tie some threads and pull them through. But actually, when you're learning to use your overlocker, I think it is really important to thread it unthread it, thread it and unthread it because you'll just get used to it. And then if your thread happens to snap, you know what you're doing because you've done it time and time again. So you've got, oh, here's your other threads. We've got some black. And we've got some white coming in as well. These are all Gutterman threads, so they're good quality threads. They won't create too much fluff because another problem with, not problem with overlockers, but another thing that happens when you're using overlockers, you get a lot of fluff, fluff and fuzz. So you want to use a good quality thread so that you're not getting excess fuzz inside your machine. So there's your navy threads. Good to stock up. I've always got different coloured threads. I've got a big box at home with all my different coloured threads in. Okay, so um, in terms of your um, other information on your machine. On the side here you've got your stitch length dial. So on the side you've got your stitch length. So this is a regular and it's got a nice little SL to tell you whether it's, uh, your, it's your stitch length and this is a regular and then it comes down and up just an easy turn and it's, it's sort of um, multiple turns so it's not just one two or three it's one and a bit one and a bit one and a bit. Okay, so that turns round. And then here is your differential feed. And the differential feed talks about how you've got, on a standard sewing machine, you have two, one set of feed dogs underneath your presser foot. Whereas with an overlocker, if you have differential feed, you'll have two sets of feed dogs. And it will control how much fabric is either fed in or pulled out the other end 
of your presser foot, if that makes sense. So it will either bunch up or it will stretch your fabric. And you'll see this little diagram here. If it goes towards this end, it will bunch it up. And if it goes to this end of the dial, it will stretch the fabrics out. So depending on what effect you need, um, and it, you might be looking for a special effect or you might just be looking to regulate the tension and how the fabric feeds through the machine. So that's your differential feed. Really, really important to have that. And then you've got another little stitch here, which is for either a rolled hem or your standard stitching. So more often than not, that will be down on your ST. You've got your standard hand crank at the bottom. Always just make sure, though, with an overlocker that you are hand cranking towards you. Always go towards you rather than away. Because sometimes with a, a standard sewing machine, you can go away. They don't always like it. But this, you, with an overlocker, you always need to be doing towards you. OK? So we've got, um, with the machine, when you are threading your machine, always make sure that you have your um, machine switched off. However, you will find that when you open the front of the machine, you just slide across and down. It opens up nicely. You'll find that when the presser foot won't allow the machine to stitch. So that's an additional safety feature for you. Um, the other half here also opens up. So you can open up the other half of your machine. So it looks very, very mechanical. Um, and underneath here, you have two different screws. You've got one larger screw underneath here that alters your blade, your cutting blade, uh, you, your blade. You can push that out of the way. So when I push that, that pushes that out of the way. And then you have one here that will actually alter the distance of the cutting blade from your presser foot. So you can change that and that will move it further away or closer in. And on the top of here, you've got a handy little guide here that shows you whether it's at normal cutting width or it's further or closer in. So it's, that's a nice, easy guide. That's a benefit of having the six, um, 664 Pro versus the non-Pro is that you get that extra window. Uh, whilst you're in here, you also have this little red dipfer, There's a, there'll be a name for that, lever, switch. You change that from, um, there's an S and there's an R, so you can move that up to, you just need to push this little dial in. So that changes, that moves on here. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it, but there's a little finger that moves. So it's connected to a finger and when it's in the R position, that's for a rolled hem. So you need to make sure that um, it's back at the R for a rolled hem. But for standard sewing, you just need to push it up to the S for standard stitching. OK, so if we have a look at, I'll just pull this up here. Oh, it also has a, um, a variable presser foot um, weight if you like. So if you're going through particularly bulky fabrics, you might want to alter the pressure that goes through the presser foot. So that's up here. Okay. Oh, and whilst we're back here, we can see also the carry handle. So that's a nice and easy way of lifting and carrying your machine. So, I mean, it's not too heavy, but it's um, got a good weight to it. Okay, what else can I tell you about the machine? I think that's pretty much the basics of the machine. It does come, as you saw on those stills that Paul had up earlier, it'll come with an accessories box and that will have things in it like um, a pair of tweezers. And if you're planning on using, what I do sometimes is I will use overlocking thread in my upper and lower loopers, but actually in the needles on the left and right hand side, I might use a standard Gutterman thread or a standard stitching thread. And you see those little discs on that accessory box, you can put those underneath your standard spools to make sure that they don't rattle around um, on your um, the thing on the on the back of the machine. And there's also some nets as well because sometimes the thread will want to unravel and slide off, so you can put the nets on as well. So there'll be some nets in there. There is a little brush for cleaning out the lint because you will get lint everywhere. Um, and I'm not sure what else comes in there because I couldn't lay my hands on the accessories box. But we'll find out for you because it's good to know that you've got all those bits and pieces in there. Oh, the other thing that I didn't mention on the machine is um, the needles are really easy to change or they're much easier than they can be on 
um, overlockers. Um, with the overlocker, again, make sure that your overlocker is off and that you're nowhere near the pedal and you're not going to sew over your feet. Um, oh, sew over your fingers. The, um, the needles are inserted. There's a tiny little screw. So you'll need the um, little screwdriver that comes with the machine. You've got the top one that does the left-hand needle and the bottom one does the right-hand needle. They can be quite difficult to get to and there is a risk sometimes is that when you unscrew this that your needle can drop down into your machine, which is a bit of a faff. You can get them out, obviously, because you can, you know, you can open up the sides and you can get into it, but it can be a bit of a faff. So this one has got a great feature where you've got this little red button. I'm trying to get to it without getting my hand in the way. Make sure that your needles are in the fully up position. So I'll go towards me. Okay, so that's the fully upright position. And then you press this red button, which I would do ordinarily with my right hand. And you would press the button and you can just lift that up. So it just tilts that towards you so that you can get better visibility of that hole underneath that the needle goes into. And you just unscrew just a little bit the screw doesn't you don't need to take the screw all the way out you just need to loosen the screw and then that needle will drop out and when you're finished and you've got the needle back in you just pop it back into place but you need to make sure that um, that's the needles already in the fully up position before you start because otherwise these prongs here that create the stitch just sort of get in the way okay oh, I had a message in from Tina thank you Tina Hope you're enjoying the demo. Good stuff. Oh, it's on the iPad. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> just waiting for it to come to me through. Uh, excellent explanation, Victoria. Thank you. I love my overlocker, but I've learned some new information today. Oh, good. Oh, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. They are really, really valuable tools to have. Um, and I love mine. I really love it. My, the first one I had was awful. <laughs> I, I really, really hated it. And it put me off overlockers for ages because trying to deal with all the tension dials and remembering all the stitches and everything, I just got really cross with it and I didn't like it at all. But actually, th uh, this machine is absolutely brilliant. And one of my students, Rose, hi Rose, um, she bought this machine. And I think it was this machine because she had the program guide on it. And I think she was really pleased with it so so I thought what I'd do is I've done a couple of stitch samples for you to show some of the um, examples of what you could do I haven't done every single stitch because I forgot when I took it home with me earlier in the week I forgot to take one of the parts with me so I haven't got all of them sorry so um, what I've got is the way that I use my overlocker um, I tend to use it in a couple of different ways. So I'll use it for constructing clothes. So when you are dealing with knit fabric, you can construct and finish a seam by trimming and overcasting or over edging all at the same time. So for that, you would use something like a, um, a safety four thread, which is stitch number one. So on here, and I've done this with a, um, a stretch fabric. So this is a knit fabric. I'm not sure whether we still have it in stock or not. But this is good for um, knit garments and loose fitting woven garments. So you can use it on either or. So along here, this is a four thread overlock stitch. So you're using both the left and the right needle and it's using the upper and lower loopers. So that's finishing and stitching at the same time. The joy of this is that actually it gives so that when you're dealing with stretch fabrics, when you're getting in and out of your clothes, they don't, the stitching doesn't snap. So that's why you need something like that. And you know what, look in your wardrobe, have a look. So many of the clothes that you buy will be constructed with an overlocker. And it's so super fast. And then if we look on the inside or the outside, if you like, it's just a really lovely finish. So that's stitch number one on your machine. Okay, so if we have a look, if we could go back and have a look at the stitch selection. So what I'm going to do is um, on here, this is currently on stitch number seven. So I'm just going to turn the dial, which was at the top here. I'm going to turn that and it can turn that way or that way. It doesn't matter which way it goes. So if we go through to stitch, there are 12 different stitches. So once I get to 12, it goes back to stitch number one. 
So this tells you, this saves you having to get out the manual every single time you want to change the stitch that you're doing. So this will tell you that um, the blue dial, so your left needle needs to be on setting number three. Your right needs to be on three, so I need to change that to attention number three. A yellow needs to be on three and the green needs to be on three. The stitch length needs to be on three, so I'll change this. This is currently on R because I was practicing a rolled hem. Okay, so that's, that was on an R. So we're going to change that to a three, but you might want to change that. It's not definite. It's not like this stitch won't work if you're doing a four or a two. So just start with a three. Your differential feed is on a one, so that's currently on a one at the moment. We've got at the bottom row, we need a left and a right needle. And you've got a little gizmo on the inside of the machine that's on three, four. There's just an alteration that you make if you're only dealing with two threads, but we're not doing that today. This is just for three, four, so that's fine. You leave that as is. You need this selection um, on the ST, which is on ST on the side. Um, this next one is also when you're dealing with um, two threads, but we're not dealing with that today, so we can ignore that. Remember that little red button that I had here? This needs to be on the S rather than in the R. Your blade needs to be engaged. There's an upwards arrow to tell you it needs to be upwards. And then your blade, your cutting width is normal, N for normal. So we're just checking in this little window here that the arrow is pointing on the N for normal. Okay, so that should be absolutely ready and set up to do stitch number one. Okay. All right, so that is your standard force safety four thread. So good for constructing with knits or loose, loose woven garments. So, you know, something like this that I'm wearing today, particularly loose. My mum will be complaining because she said it's not flattering, it doesn't show off your waist. Sorry, mum. So something like that, that would be really good for constructing something like that. Um, other stitches that you've got are uh, a stretch knit. This one is also a four thread. This one's got slightly different settings. Good for adding waistbands, ribbing, and making your knit garments. Ever so slightly different settings on this one. Okay. All right. Um, what you can also do is um, stitch number three on here is a gathering stitch using four threads. So I've just done this on a cotton just for a, a bit of variety. So you can see there how it just brings in the top of that fabric. So that will help you with gathering. And that's by changing that differential feed. So if we go back over and look at the machine on stitch number three. Okay. So on stitch number three, we need to be, all of the tensions are at um, number three. Your stitch length you would change to a four. You would change your differential feed. You can see that's where that changes. So you go anywhere from the 1.5, which is a little gather, all the way up to the 2.25, which is a much tighter gather on there. You're still doing both threads and pretty much all of the other um, controls are staying exactly the same. So that will help you with gathering. So that will bring your fabric in together. And that differential feed is underneath here on these feed dogs. Can I just turn the machine? Which way should we turn the machine? Which way is going to be the easiest to go? Sorry, throwing a curveball in. But there's two different sets of feed dogs. You've got some at the beginning part of the foot and you've got some at the back of the foot. So can we, shall we turn it? I can turn it that way and you might be able to see um, you've got one set of feed dogs that run here and then you've got another set of feed dogs that run here so by changing the differential feed it changes how quickly these feed dogs work and how quickly these feed dogs work so um, if you're gathering these ones will work faster and pull the fabric through faster here faster than these ones and you can see on an overlocker how much longer this foot is than a standard sewing machine because that's gripping underneath these front feed dogs to pull the fabric through or to stretch it out. If you're stretching, these ones work faster and they pull the fabric through faster than these ones here. So that's how your gather works. Okie dokes. Right, 
So whilst I'm moving all of this round, we're using one of these um, one of these mats, and they are really super. Because what I find is when I'm overlocking, the machine works really fast. I did one project again. Well, book day. Um, I was making an outfit, and what was Charlotte? She was someone from a David Williams book, and she had loads and loads of ruffles, and I mean, absolutely loads. And I was just doing a rolled hem on layers and layers and layers and layers of ruffles that I was making for this outfit. And the whole machine was absolutely shaking and it was gradually working its way off the table. So something like this is absolutely brilliant because it will just, one, it will protect your table and it will just stop your machine moving around. It's a really nice, lovely cushion, 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. And it's got like a waffly groove. It's really spongy really nice in the studio here we're using them also underneath the presser foot the foot pedal for the machines and uh, because all the time you were finding that the machine presser foot uh, the foot pedal was just wandering off and you could never find it so having it on top of the mat is brilliant lots of people love that it is good we haven't got that much in stock so just bear that in mind if you're thinking about popping it into your basket check it out and don't forget, we've only got one PMP all day. So if you bought yourself earlier, if you bought yourself a stitch ripper, you got yourself, if you're a new buyer, a um, brand new gift. If you add this in, it's still the same PMP. Absolutely super. Good deal. OK, so that's your gathering stitch. Uh, you've also got, like I said to you, um, it's not just using for knit fabrics. So here I've taken a piece of um, satin that I had in my stash because I don't throw anything out. Um, this is a three thread. So this you're using on a slightly more lightweight fabric, medium or lightweight fabric. And um, here I've used it to show how I edge finish, but also how I construct as well. So quite often, if you've got a fabric that frays, and this does this phrase the minute you look at it, it goes absolutely everywhere all the threads come off. What I like to do is I will cut out and I'll use on something like this, I might use my serrated scissors to stop the fraying, but then I will run all of my pattern pieces through the overlocker before I construct. So I'll go around all the pieces that I can do. Some pieces are a bit more tricky to do than others on the curves, but I'll go around and just finish off all those edges because it means that as you're constructing, the fabric's not unraveling in front of your eyes. And the nice thing is that um, also it means that if you're working on a project and then you're putting it on one side, it just means that it just gets looked after a little bit more. So that's your three thread. Um, the other nice thing that you can do with these is a rolled hem. And you can see how lightweight this fabric is that I've used. So this is a rolled hem, a three thread rolled hem. You can also do a two thread rolled hem, but this is your three thread. So it does some nice hemming. So that wraps the fabric round and finishes at the same time and will also trim. So you can use that on scarves or lightweight hemming. And obviously if you're using a coordinating thread, well, you can go for a contrast. You can do easy napkins, napkins and serviettes. But you can see how lightweight that fabric is that's gone through the machine with absolutely no bother and it's created a really nice finish okay so that's your rolled hem um, and then I've got a really fancy decorative stitch that I've done on here where it's called a flat lock stitch which is quite it can be used for construction but it's quite often used for um, like an accent so this is where you would do a um, you overlock as normal but when you open it out, you then pull the fabric apart and it creates that effect. So that would be really nice on the bottom of a sweatshirt. So you do a double hem, if you like. And it finishes off quite nicely, doesn't it? Because a cover stitch machine is something that I don't think we're stocking yet. Um, and they can be quite expensive. But this gives... Have we got a cover stitch now? <gasps> That's my next show. Um, but if you don't have a cover stitch... Um, machine then that's a really nice finish just to bring your makes up to the next level so that's your flat lock so those are just a couple of stitch samples I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of what you can achieve with your overlocker and if you ask really nicely I might do some stitching as well but we'll, what we'll do is we'll talk about some patterns um, I thought what it would be nice to do is to talk about 
some of the patterns that we've done recently um, about using the overlocker that are really quick, easy makes. So should we have a look at some of those? Okie dokes, right, let's go over the other side. <laughs> so, should we talk about some fabrics first? So these are brilliant. I've looked at these ones, the ones with the stars on them. I've seen those really quite frequently when I've come in. We've got one here that we have on my friend. The yellow one here we've got on the underneath. Really, really lovely. These are an embossed effect on those. So these have got lovely stars and in the background got um, uh, diagonal detail. This is 95% polyester in ochre, 5% uh, elastane, so it's got a nice little bit of stretch. This is uh, 150 wide and it's 5.99 for a half meter. Let me just move these a little bit. So have a look at these. So this is your ochre. So this will be two units, I'm assuming, because it's quite long. Okay, so that's in your ochre. The stars are nice. It's lovely as that dress and also as a sweater. Okay. And you also have the dark grey. I love the yellow and the grey together. I think I'd be tempted to buy a little bit of each. Okay. So here's your grey. almost like a marl type grey. It's not totally dark. It's a mid grey. See, and I think it's a really nice print that you could use for adults or children. It's not too grown up to use for children. 5 99 That's for one unit. So if you are buying fabrics and you're not bought um, from us before, one unit is a half metre. But if you put two units in, you get a full metre that's cut as a full piece. OK, so we also have, let's go for this one. This is grey and pink. Oh, this is super popular and it's only just come back in and it's reversible. Very exciting. I'll show you this side first. So this is a quilted jersey. So it's grey with a little kisses on there. Kiss, kiss. And then should we look at the other side? The other side. Look at that. How good is that? So nice for a contrast. I love the difference there. And it's been used on this mannequin behind me in the grey and yellow, which we'll have a look at in a minute. This is the grey and pink. So from one fabric, you'll manage to get two different looks. Oh, and is this CLs? It is CLs. This is what I was talking about earlier that would be nice in the boiled wool as well. So if you've got some boiled wool, this is CLs pattern. We'll so the grey and yellow will do next, but this is where the same fabric's been used, um, just the opposite way around. See? So good to contrast with one fabric. So that's your grey and yellow. It's really, it feels almost brushed, but without the fuzziness, if that makes sense. Because sometimes brushed, brushed fabrics have got like a fuzziness. So you've got your two different sides. I love it. Have I mentioned I like yellow? <laughs> I'll go out dressed with this and my yellow scarf and my yellow hat. And my yellow, I do have a yellow bag as well. But no yellow shoes. I wonder why. Uh, Okie dokes. And then we also have the light. Hmm. Nope. Hold on. We've got pink and pink and we've got pink and orange. Which one do we want, Paul? Pink and pink. Oh, it's like a pink and raspberry. So 
There's your two sides. And we also have one here. Oh, we've got a sample in this one as well. It's a, like a dusky, vintagey kind of pink in the background. Only just come back in stock. Must have had a good show the other day. Five ninety-nine. That's she is here. Oh, I'm getting crowded. Totally sold out last time. So this is nice because it's been used. The reverse has been used on the neckline. And on the pocket, uh, not the pockets, those aren't pockets, those are sleeves. The end of the sleeves, what about the aligning? No, not in the lining. Sold out last time, so if you missed out, it's back, it's back. Okay, and one last fabric, and this one is also, I have a sample for you. This one is, oh, it's quite tempting, grey and orange. It's all, it's, it does seem quite bright, but it's got a slight burnt orangeness to it. It's not neon. And I've got a sample of... <laughs> we'll put it on. <laughs> Not sure my hips will fit in that. Nice with pockets. Nice and cosy, absolutely cosy, lovely. Five ninety nine for that fabric, light grey with orange. So we've got a couple of patterns available. Let's start off with, what have we got? Jules Fallon. This is, this is the Julia. This comes in a nice wide range of sizes, size 8 to 22. And this is the Julia. This is the one that was behind me here, which was the one in the pink and pink. Pink and pink. And from uh, fabric quantities, you need anywhere from 1.7 meters up to 2.3 meters. So you'll need either four units or five units, depending on the size you want. So if, um, Paula, the, um, the back of the pattern is that online. So if you need to know, just have a look online and the instructions will be there. Now we demoed this on the 20th of April last year. There's a nice demo for that one. That's 16 pounds. Okie dokes. Let's move on to the peas blossom. Peas blossom. <laughs> Got my teeth back in. Oh dear. So this one's £16, nice loose fitting top. This has, I think, three different necklines. You can use your medium weight jersey knit fabrics, or you could use like a viscose or a crepe. Let's have a look inside. They're beautifully presented. Mm -hmm. with yourself a postcard and your instructions and all your paper pattern pieces on nice good quality paper so that you can use over and over again okay Put those back in and then we've got one more pattern to show you today this is Cordelia Also £16. This is a Cordelia dress with or without sleeves. Have a look. £16. Okay, let's see. Um, right, we're going to do the book. Okie dokes. This, if you are planning on sewing knit fabrics, then this is an absolutely fabulous book to have. This is by Tilly, who's now got much shorter hair than she does now on that book. Everything you need to know about dealing with stitch fabrics. Looks very Nigella there, doesn't she? It's the hair, very oh, much shorter hair now. Chopped it all off. So, should we have a quick flip through the book? So, right. Oh, it's new. I love a new book. 
So, so this will take you through everything you need to know about dealing with stretch because I think people are often quite worried about it but actually if you've got yourself um, a book like this, this will just take you through everything you need to know about how to cut your fabrics, what you're looking for when you're shopping because it feels like a bit of a minefield if you're used to dealing with woven fabrics. Um, it feels a bit odd to start shopping for fa uh, knit fabrics. You're not sure what you're looking for. There's a nice um, explanation here on dealing with stretch or the amount of stretch. Sometimes when you're shopping, uh, when you have a sewing pattern, it will tell you how much stretch you need, particularly for um, a close fitting garment. You'll need a certain amount of stretch within your fabric so that you can get in and out of the garment when it's finished. So it just shows you how to actually measure your stretch. comes with oh in the back here whilst I'm flicking through you've got six full scale patterns in the back that talks about cutting out your fabric because that's a little bit different dealing with your stripes dealing with stitches so it will tell you how to do it if you've got a standard sewing machine and also if you've got an overlocker the types of stitches you might want to use a bit more of an instruction here if you've forgotten how to uh, thread your machine with a 664 Pro, it's all there for you. Okay. So lots of information there, good colour diagrams, and then your patterns. Oh, how nice would that be with your stretch? See, that would be good in the um, reversible jerseys, wouldn't it? £22.50 for your book by Tilly. Nice dress. It's so cheery, I love all the bright colours. It feels inviting. A nice raglan sleeve t-shirt. But good skills to pick up with um, adding on your neckline, inserting sleeves. But you'll be amazed at how quickly garments can come together. Something like that t-shirt, I reckon you could sew together once it's cut out. You could sew together within an hour. Great way to start the new year. If you've already got yourself an overlocker for Christmas, then this is a, an excellent thing to add into your basket. Dealing with ruffles. Pretty neckline that, isn't it? Jumper dress with a cowl neck. And you know what, Jersey's so, for, so forgiving when you're sewing. You know, if you're just a little bit wonky with your cutting, then you can just ease it in. Okay, so that's your Tilly book, £22.50. There's some pictures from your book. Okie dokes. Right, now, earlier on, I have been delivered a few bits and pieces. Earlier on we spoke about um, curved safety pins. So we've got those now. We found them. They're online. Uh, Louisa uses these to uh, do all of her basting. And don't forget my super tip of the day, keeping your red magnetic pin dish for keeping your safety pins in. I know it comes in a nice case, but you get loads of those in there. 150 for 4.99. Should we have a look at those? If you've not seen curved safety pins, um, they are brilliant. I don't think I had a standard safety pin with me just to compare. But these look like someone's sat on them, bent them. So the nice thing about these, let's have a look. Mm -mm. If we get some fabric, and this would be on a quilt rather than my random stitch samples. Um, is it, they're a lot easier to get in and out of your fabric because they've been curved. Once you've gone in, oh, and it's not going to go because it's a knit. Let's see. Let's go on a fabric, a cotton. So they make stitch it, uh, basting an awful lot easier because you can just go in the fabric and the curve in the needle allows it, as you push through, to just come back up. And it means that you're not catching the end of the pin on your finger quite so much. They just go in and out, nice and easy. Okay, so they come in and out and then you can just close them up. And it means that they, they allow your 
uh, quilt to sit flat because if that was a, a flat safety pin then that would be bulking up a bit more and they're nice and easy to remove so those you curve safety pins you've got 150 in there for 4.99 okay so just thought we'd mention those right so um uh, we also have for your pleasure is an over locker needle threader um, sometimes it can be difficult to get into all the nooks and crannies and you do get a um a pair of tweezers in your kit with the 664 pro but it's it can be quite difficult sometimes to use those and something like this is a lot easier to use it's got a tiny little hook uh, type thing on the end and you can place that through some of the eyes of the needle guides that you have on your machine and that will just help you pull through that thread just makes the job a little bit easier 2.99 so if you're buying an overlocker get yourself one of these as well nice little add-on and the other thing we have, um, which might be useful for um, some of, not for the Jules Fallon patterns, not needed for those, but if you're doing some of the Tilly patterns, maybe, anything with a bit of ruching, this is elastic that you can add. So there's a little picture on the back. If you can zoom in on the picture on the back, you can see there's a ruched skirt. That's it. So this is elastic that you can feed in through your overlocker okay 4.99 and it comes in a tape i'm just trying to remind I'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of but it's just it's got a good amount of stretch to it okay okay logs um, just to let everyone know, the mat that I spoke about earlier is limited. There's not much stock left of that one. It was 40 centimetres square. Graphics are coming in for that one. So that's your non-slip mat, £14.49. So easy, slip reduction overlocker mat. But not just for your overlocker. You can put it under your presser foot. Uh, I keep saying presser foot. Under your foot pedal of your machine. Keeps stuff from flying around, jigging around. Okie dokes. Um, also limited we have is um, the pink on pink only just come back in stock today and we're selling it all you're all buying it so this was your pink on pink reversible knit it's got that nice quilted look and it feels nice and snugly and it is actually three layers of fabric effectively because you've got your front and your back and you've got thread in the middle so it's 5.99 okay right so shall we have a quick look back at the overlocker I'll run through a couple of the different bits of pieces so that if anyone missed anything we can recap on that so it's a four thread overlocker because you do get some basic overlockers that are only three threads so this is a four thread overlocker it has a telescopic um, thread guide here that um, goes down for easy storage and portability and then will come up, so that's nice. Um, you have a colour guides, so you've got your blue, red, yellow and green that help you guide um, where your threads go and the, they refer to your reference here and they refer to the diagram that you've got underneath this front panel to help you understand where your threads need to go. So you've got those nice colour coordinated. You've got this thread waste bin that I've got here. Um, in terms of the front of the machine, you've got your program uh, reference here that reminds you what all your different settings need to be. Uh, you have a variable um, stitch length. You have your differential feed that helps you with your gathering or evening out your stitch. It does a lovely rolled hem. You have an adjustable cutting width and you have, um, what else was I going to say? Your blade can go either up or down. And the other nice thing about this machine is that your needles can be replaced more easily by pressing in a little button here and your needle um, holder comes upwards so it's easier to get those needles in and out. Okay, so that is your basic um, run down oh and you've got a little bit, bit of a thread cutter on the side so shall we go I'm just going to go for a standard 
um, safety thread number four. So that's um, uh, number one stitch. So we need uh, all of our threads are on tension number three. And um, so I've just turned this dial here to remind myself that the stitch is number one and we're just following. Um, the uh, stitch length is on three, so I need to change that back to a three. And the differential feed is on a one. So I'll change that back to a one. We're using both the left and the right needles and um, we're on ST still, standard stitching, and we're on standard rather than rolled at the front of the machine. Our blade is up and we're at a normal cutting width. So if I get myself some fabric, just cut it a little bit roughly, a little bit smaller, some fabric. And if you didn't see this blade earlier, I was showing this blade. Um, and it's really super blade because it's um, it activates via pressure rather than um, rather than a safety catch, which is nice because it gets nice and safe. So if we just have a look, can we come in and see that? So it's got a cover that comes off, but the blade itself isn't activated until you press down onto your cutting mat, and it's got a setting on the back for whether you're doing a thin layers of fabric or thick layers of fabric. And because of the way it's been designed, you can either use it left or right-handed. Okay, and we sell replacement blades. They're about £4.50, something like that for a replacement blade. They'll be on the page today. Okie dokes. So, let's see. Moment of truth. So, in order to start overlocking, what you need to do is you just feed your fabric just under the very start of this. Shall I just turn? Yep, okay. Need to make sure that your presser foot's down. Always something that you need to remember when you are dealing with bulkier fabrics or knits that your foot needs to be down. So what this will do on this stitch, this will sew with both my left and right needle. Sorry, I've just noticed that that's not here. But this blade here will cut the fabric at the same time. So you can see here it's cutting off the excess and at the top oops, something's caught at the back and on the back here you'll see just coming out the back is fabric that's been sewn together I think oh, are we there I'm just going to sew off the side so if we can come in, oh, hold on, let me do that one again because I think something wasn't quite right. So stitch and cut. So just whiz off the side. So if we can have a look at the front here. Mm, something's not going right with that left hand needle. Oh, I know, nothing like doing a demo on live TV. So, the joys, joys of live TV. So just one of those threads hasn't quite caught. So why don't we have a quick look at that PowerPoint slide so that you can see everything that you're getting with that. So that will show you the stitch reference guide, all your accessories that you're getting in there. You're getting your waist tray that you're getting with the 664 in the, with the Pro. Just, yeah, I'm just having a bit of a problem with the thread for some reason. I just, oh, I've just realized what's happened. The threads just got caught underneath the spool. I'll try that again. You won't have everybody watching you at home. Just threading the left hand needle first and then I'll do your right hand needle. So I always think if in doubt and you're not sure what's going on with your machine it's just unthread it and rethread it and that's where I think if you um, if you are new to your overlocker that's where just practicing threading and unthreading threading and unthreading because as soon as that thread snaps you're a bit stuck. And you don't know what you're doing so if you've practiced and practiced if someone comes to me 
for a, um, a lesson for an overlocker I get them to thread it follow the instructions and there will be yes there's a guide at the front of the machine but you will also have within your user manual it's a really good comprehensive user manual it's in there so I'll sit them down and say right now thread your machine and they'll thread their machine and then I'll take all the threads out and they look at me as if to say you're kidding that's taken me forever and I'll make them do it all over again because the more comfortable you can get with your machine the better it will be okay so that there okay that's better so here you can see we've managed to stitch this is the four thread safety stitch so it's got two lines of stitching and it's got an, a top thread from your upper looper and then a bottom on your bottom looper, lower looper. So that creates, that's managed to stitch and finish the seam at the same time. So it's super neat, super tidy. Okay. Have we got time to try for a rolled hem? Go on. So let's have a look at my rolled hem. Rolled hem was stitch number eight. Um, oh no, I'm not sure we can because I don't know what I did with the um, notes here. And so for the rolled hem, we're going to do this with um, three, um, three threads rather than four. So I'm making sure my needles in the very the needles are in the very up position, and I'm going to take out my left hand needle. Oh. Oh. So that will just take that needle out and we're going to take out this thread. I'm going to take that one out and out of the way. But you need to make sure that even if you are doing a three thread overlock that you take out that left hand needle. Okay, so just remind me, I'll put a spare needle here. So now we've got our right hand needle only. We also need to make sure that we're changing here onto the rolled hem. So we're going to place um, poke that with inwards Oops, I'll take this off and slide that back to the R for the rolled hem okay so number four needs to be on uh, the red needs to be on four three three the stitch length needs to be on R for rolled rolled differential feed on one which you can adjust if needs be and I think everything else is the same because we've already done that so let's hold your breath hold your breath okay so cutting stitching and you can see how that's creating a nice rolled edge just goes off the side and when you get to the end you can either use your thread cutter at the side through that red cutter or you can go across the front and cut with the blade so that is your rolled hem that's your three thread rolled hemmed there's a two thread version as well but that's your three three thread version so that's a lovely finish that's the one that I also did on the chiffon so a rolled hem is a really really great um, great thing to have. Okay, dogs. So remember, if you've ordered anything else today, you can just add that into your basket and you're not paying any more PMP. It does come from um, Elna directly, so it won't come in the same parcel as everything else, and it comes with a two year guarantee. So if you've got any problems, you can, you know, you can take that with Elna. But it is just that one PMP, so that's an absolute bargain. So that's it really. Should we have a look at what's on tomorrow? John is back tomorrow. I've not seen John in absolutely ages. He's carrying on with our alphabet. At eight o'clock, he's got P for pre-cuts. At nine o'clock, she ha or he has Q for quilt as you go with Victoria Carrington. I think that might be the one that we've had on set today. 10 o'clock, Q is for quilt tools and fabrics. Following on 11 o'clock is for quilting rule, ruler hour. Oh, is Victoria only on for one hour tomorrow? Oh, she's in for the quilting, the quilting ruler hour. And at 12 o'clock, R is for Riley Blake hour. Oh, that sounds good. So thank you very much for joining us today. Remember, check out your baskets if there's anything you'll think of buying, particularly those fabrics from that first hour, because some of those are going super quick. And 
this is going as well so don't forget add those to your basket if you're considering making yourself a nice jewels top uh, i hope you've enjoyed seeing jewels uh, not jewels louisa She's had a great time today. Um, thanks for having me. I am back next week, I think on Wednesday. I'm doing some EPP and a quilt demo. So come and join me then. In the meantime, enjoy your day. Have a great time. Do a bit of sewing. And the team will see you tomorrow. And I will see you bright and early again next week. Thank you very much. See you soon. Tune in on Wednesday the 16th of January when Victoria Peat and Fiona Hesford are on hand with ways to stay warm indoors and out. Victoria is live at 10am with a simply joyous pickle dish quilt designed by Joe Avery. She'll be using vibrant cashmere garden fabric collection and fun foundation paper piecing technique to make this modern classic quilt. Then at 11am, Fiona is here to show us how to sew a trio of luxurious faux fur accessories, a chic hat, stylish scarf and charming vintage star bag. As always, Fiona has top tips, this time on working with faux fur for sewing skills. So for cold weather projects that make winter worth it, join Victoria and Fiona from 10am on Wednesday the 16th of January, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Join us for our early bird special.